Hey, hey, here we are, folks. We might be drunk. We're really doing it. We got uh, <laughs> cheesy bread, homemade. Sam's here, and we are our guest, Tom Pop. Everybody, the hurrah! Great Tom Papa. Thanks for having me, fellas. Is, this, is it? Like, are you a bread snob? I know you eat yeah. a lot of bread. Yeah. So you, Uh-oh. you'll tell us if this sucks. Yeah. And you oh, made boy. this from scratch. Yeah. Oh, Holy boy. shit! You did. Yeah. Good for you. How long have you been baking bread? Off and on, all the time. Off and on. It's cheaper to buy it. Yeah. Is it? Okay. And it's better. And what yeah. is in this? Uh, sausage, cheese, oh. mozzarella, and cheddar. Oh my oh, god! Oh wow! Two cheeses. I'm off bread. No, Why? I'm <laughs> it's good. Oh, it's warm. Really good. Nice job. Would you? S- Anything with <laughs> <laughs> once sausage hits, you're just like, oh yeah. What bread? You just oh. ca- you're just carrying sausage. Right. Good no. job. Would you say it if it wasn't? I would. Okay. It's really good. I have no problem saying it. When I saw it from afar, I was like, I don't know. That crust looks a little pale. Ooh. But it's that kind of bread. You wow. nailed it. Yeah. And there's nothing people love more on podcasts than hearing chewing. <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> my whole podcast is about like eating with each other and like hanging out and anything crunchy. The people, I'm like, that's You're, what that's what the podcast is. I'm right. like, Stop the goddamn chewing. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't do that with porn. <laughs> All I heard was smacking. <laughs> And, it's like, and you don't you, you you hear chewing all your whole life. Yeah, you're right. Sitting with people, you hear chewing. It's yeah. a big deal. Great job. That's nice delicious, work. Man. What's well you have other bread? You have, good. This is your go-to bread. Yeah. yeah. Do you have like one bread that you've mastered, and this is it, or are there, do you fuck around with other mm. breads? Mm. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Sausage. So good. Oh my god. Very good. Yeah. Now, how did you? Well done. You fill this market of non-gay bread maker lover <laughs> yeah that's pretty rare it is very rare but you did if it. i was single it would really be a thing oh. women are very attracted it's kind of a fireman thing like a guy who bakes i've yes. never seen a baking calendar yeah <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been in my world for a while the firemen who eat bread it's, it's a grocer <laughs> calendar right, but, uh, right. a fireman with a sausage bread <laughs> oh, thank you. so good all right. Well done. You're right, though. Like, that you think fireman chili? Like, you do think of the cooking. Oh, that's true. You you have a bit I love about how like everyone's frantically working out. They don't eat bread, and you're like, you're three pounds lighter, <laughs> right? uh, and you're yeah. miserable. No one will ever know. Yeah. Right. No one will ever know. Yeah. Mm. I was uh, <laughs> I was at I can name drop. I was at a, a dinner before a Largo set for Judd Apatow's um, uh, charity show. At Largo, and uh, we're at dinner, and he's going on vacation in like two days, and he really, really, really wants the chicken parmesan. He like really wants it, but he's like, "But I want to look good on the boat." I, I'm like, <laughs> uh, Judd, <laughs> you could have five chicken parmesans. You, no one's gonna know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not gonna. In your head, you feel swollen and fat right. and shitty, but you look for the outside exactly the same. And no one's looking at Judd for hotness. You know, <laughs> no offense, but that ship has sailed. <laughs> Except for Judd, like in his mind. I guess right? so. <laughs> I guess so. But yeah, we, former guest. Former <laughs> guest. Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was on here. And we he actually didn't drink. Amazing. No, yeah. <laughs> we didn't drink on that episode because we had Burt Kreischer on the day before. Oh, oh god! And he, and he nearly killed us with his drinking. Did he really? Yeah. He, we drank so much on the app, and then he's like, "Let's go to a bar." We're like, "Dude, we're yeah. fucking dying." Wow. He did three hours. He cried. He he <laughs> laughed. He did everything. It was it was a lot. Is he? Uh, is he? I guess he's our Ron White, right? Like he's. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Like, Ron no was like joke. a so slip. Uh, 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 so Ron was like a slow sipping whiskey right. guy, though, or tequila guy. Bird is like a throw them all day. Party like, guy. He almost, he almost, the way Homer Simpson would eat donuts. <laughs> that's that's burnt with alcohol. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and Ron quit drinking. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't see. So that. he's like his his crown is gone now wow. I think it's all Bert so it's all Bert I guess this so this is like The Wire well, season 4 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy wow because I remember learning that it was legit like that Ron was legit drinking like all through the sets and oh, everything yeah. and I was like oh man because that's like you know Dean Martin like faked it right you know like he started with, but then it was just like but then at the end he was a real alcoholic well then oh, at the yeah, end we got son, really sad right? yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah they Such said Frank Sinatra spilled more than he drank that was the old joke. Right. Yeah. But Stanhope's still hanging. 
Uh, is he st- <laughs> we got to speak of still going. I mean, what are we doing here, Beer Joe? Uh-oh. Today we're doing uh, dirty martinis. I'm assuming that everyone is a vodka guy here, right? I like vodka, yes. Vodka. There we go. All right. I, you, I think of vodka. you as like you're like an old school drinker. Uh-huh. Cuz you I see you in the top hat sometimes at the cellar. There's always a martini. <laughs> so when you said you were coming in, I was like, we got to get martini. <laughs> yeah, that, thank you very much. That's exactly what I drink. Yeah, Absolutely. I love Especially a nice martini. If everyone likes uh, blue cheese olives, then <sighs> it's the perfect time for it. Blue cheese olives, yes, absolutely. Bring it on. Oh, I am pumped. I need it. We've done 78 podcasts today, so I need this drink. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like it pretty dry. Do you make them dry? Well, if it's dirty, I don't usually even use dry vermouth. Oh, That's my this thing. guy's good. Yeah. That's my thing. Like, I think yeah. it should be one or the other. And mm. there's like two centuries of like, you know, really intense, like really, you know, knowledgeable bartenders and mixologists and then random viewers who mm-hmm. will disagree with me. But I think it should be one or the other. It should either be like olive juice or brine right. or a dry vermouth. Because right. otherwise they're just like contending with each other and fighting to like uh-huh. get up your nose. And it's just this like really weird taste. In the, exactly it's like right. an old New York 80s thing to do both. But uh, Oh, really? I no. Don't like it. It's like yeah. a steakhouse thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, you got to really like that vermouth taste. I, when I'm at home, I just rinse the ice with the vermouth mm-hmm. and dump it. Whoa. To keep the ice and then just go all by. Yeah, it looks like so a, a good rinse is a good way to, yeah. to start out. But um, you I personally heard. just like just like olive juice. And I never like it shaken unless I'm doing like just straight up, like with nothing in it. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, if you have olive juice or dry vermouth and you shake it, it has like an effervescence and just comes up into your nose uh, and like bites you. Nice. You really just want it like in your mouth and not in your face. That's what she said. <laughs> Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom just turned so quickly to Margaret. This is also, you came this on a good a... martini app because the only other app I think we did martinis was with uh, Chris Stefano, and we did not have beer juice. So I'm pretty sure I was drunk enough to stir them with my finger. Yeah. I mean, so you hey, came that's right where the flavor is, man. A lot of the old school bartenders yeah. will tell you that. That's where the flavor is. Yeah. <laughs> my dad used to get drunk when I was a kid and he, would, he couldn't find his toothbrush and he would do the did your dad oh. ever do the toothbrush finger? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a bad oh. that was a bad child. When you come up when you when you come up a little short and you gotta uh and you gotta fill the glass like you're doing now, mm-hmm. uh same ice is good, right? You don't have to dump and go. Same ice is fine. Honestly, like there's not nobody's been in there, you know. Like, yeah. It's all good. Yeah, I also have to compliment you. I love the glasses because I hate when you get the small martini glasses yes. and it's dripping over the edge. And now I can't walk through a room. <laughs> right. If I get yes. bumped, the drink is compromised. <laughs> yeah, this is the right so type of martini my, glass. Actually, my Come favorite, below the, the the rim. My favorite is uh, for martinis and many other drinks in general is the coupe. In glass. the coupe, mm. oh, a coupe. Uh, but then if you're doing a coupe, then you gotta you gotta leave the shaker with your guest. That's very true. Oh. That's very like true. A a pro. Yeah. Um, that is very true. And like, I love when that happens as well. I mean, yeah. you might as well leave the bottles. They do that at uh, Musso and Frank's. Oh, uh, we tried to go there last time we were in LA. Oh, yeah. It's so we, great. The three of us got to go. Cheers. Cheers. The old uh, gang. Look at us. Yes. All right. Good to be back. Mm-mm-mm. Dude. Wow. Uh, it's got a, like a thickness to it. That, so the, the, this is uh, the brine from the blue cheese olives. Right. So it's a little, it's like, it's a little oilier. A little, a little yeah, oilier. I don't want to say greasy, but it's there. Uh, yeah. But I like I love my martinis just filthy, dirty. You know, oh, like, yeah. If I'm an Italian restaurant, I'm saying like make my martini like your pasta water. Like, yeah. uh-huh. like, really? Briny like the ocean. I want this a is... dirty whore of a martini. Yes. <laughs> this is a real whorish martini. A whorish martini. No, no, no I, want, I want a dirty nun, you know? I want mm. dirty on the out, uh, or rather clean on the outside, dirty on the inside. It's ama- there's yeah. no bite at all. So like there's no that vodka sting. Mm-hmm. No, if you, if, if you does, stir a martini enough, it, there shouldn't be a stink until mm-hmm. it gets warm. It does leave a little thing on your lips like you'd have chapstick. Yeah. It does. It's nice. <laughs> That's what the bread is for, though. So, <laughs> right. So soak it up you. with sausage bread. You're, you guys right. are really living. Right. You're like an old school. I, you really do feel like an old school drinker to me. You're like you're almost like an out of place in time. Comic. Yeah. I feel like we all have a little I, of that. Right. But like, there's certain comics like... A three, maybe. Mulaney definitely has oh, it. That yeah. voice. Uh-huh. Natterman. Natterman. Yeah. But you do feel like you could have been a comic today or in 1957. Yeah, I do feel that way. I do feel that way. And that's why I'm starting to dress this way. Yeah. I'm starting to go like, the, with the, like I want to be like the dad. Like, 
I always th- you have these images of what you are, and I'm no, I'm really the guy like at the barbecue when the, there's kids around, just like taking out some money. Here you go. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't tell your mother. Don't right, tell your mother. Right. You guys doing all right? You doing all right? Here you go. Here's a five for you. Here's a five for you. Right. So I'm trying to uh, incorporate that and just kind of own it a little bit more. It's definitely a Don Draper on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah exactly. We're Charlie Sheen on Two and a Half Men. <laughs> Either oh, way. Uh, yeah. it's that's weird. the danger zone. It's like, no. I don't know if I want to. We praise Sheen constantly on this pod. Yeah. We love Sheen. I mean, imagine getting him on here. I love Sheen too, but I didn't like that's Like he, he wore like the socks with the mm-hmm. like the big white socks i don't know yeah that was horrible he was supposed to be like the bad boy and he had a stripe on each side like whoa <laughs> he's wearing a, a bowling shirt and shorts who's the oh, bad cbs boy? what yeah. do you want him to do i know but give the guy a leather jacket or something i want to lean more towards rodney like in back to school or yeah like that kind of thing like the best that's like that's <laughs> that's my role model <laughs> rodney in back to school is is like a top five comic performance for me. It's he, yeah. he's on the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. insane. I mean, every fucking line in the beginning. Oh, you're impossible. Oh yeah, and you're easy. <laughs> <Just> every zing. <laughs> uh, they just said do so stand good. up in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> every, every line every... is just serving to set him up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how we just all picture the world on some level right, of comics, right. and then like everything is to like. So, and then he just wrote that movie. <laughs> yeah, know. just walking in and approaching. Appropriately to every situation, and then Kinnison was in that one. Uh, that's right. Kinnison oh is the teacher, the young Kinnison. Yeah. When, the yeah. scene, the, when they when they get in the bar fight, I think of that line constantly. Drinking when he goes, bring us a bring us a pitcher of beer every seven minutes until someone passes out. <laughs> then bring us one every ten. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Come so on. Great. <laughs> the king, so great. And then you start to realize when you look at his style uh, in dressing and all that stuff, it's a lot of golf clothes. Yes. It's a lot of uh like his his upgrade from this kind of a shirt is always a cardigan with a wide lapel. Right. And and, and red and slacks. like red slacks, yeah, right? Or yeah. like plaid <laughs> plaid That's slacks. That's so true. Yeah. It's like golf obnoxious. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> like he's like the loud guy. Caddyshack. That's what he is. Yeah, right? he's same the, thing. The barrette with a pom pom thing on top <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> yeah. But it we, works. We were hey, watching a hey. Caddyshack. <laughs> Pointing at everybody. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> we we were watching in Caddyshack in the Houston Improv Green Room. It was me and Gary Veter, and I have a young guy named DeWood uh, who's like 19 filming us, mm-hmm. and he's a kid. Yeah. So we're watching Caddyshack, and we're laughing our ass off, and he's like, this is so cheesy. And we're like, you don't get it. Uh, it's Rodney. And then he, it, this. he was, yeah. he, at a certain point, he started laughing really hard, but like, yeah. that's Rodney's gift, is that like, he will appeal to any generation. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was, the, yeah. He was, I, I said something to uh, Neil Brennan uh, we were t- he was he was talking about uh, guys who made it later, and everybody uses uh, Rodney or Lewis Black as the example. Yeah, right. Like guys who made it after the forties every time. Yeah, and uh, and Neil's like, right. So uh, you're either Lewis Black, this amazing writer, or you're Rodney, a living cartoon character. <laughs> 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 he Dude, really is. Rover really Dangerfield is. was like less of a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Rodney as a cartoon dog was like less. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that was more than Rodney in real life. More subtle. <laughs> yeah. More tame. But also, you know, when you think about the energy that he had behind it and all, and then, you know, it was the era of Coke. Like people were right. doing a lot. Of, when you think of how hard we work, and it's like, of course, like show business fueled on Coke, it's like they were cheating. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we're doing all this straight. Like with no, like just down in coffee and trying to keep going, like with espresso and stuff. Right. Roddy was doing rails and then going on That's to the true. set. And you know I what I mean? I thought about that. Yeah. It is the steroid era for comedy. Yeah, right. That's exactly. Like Barry Bonds, you're like, yeah, it's easy to hit 73 <laughs> when you're yoked out of your yeah. fucking. Not easy, but like, but you got yeah. an advantage. Also, a testament how funny it is because comedy got really cool and it was like, Carlin with the beard and Pryor was fucking awesome mm-hmm. and you know Robin Williams was fun as hell and all over the room yeah. but Rodney was just in the pocket suit on red tie but jokes. relentless relentless, relentless. With the jokes though like there was no it was it was gonna be by submission you were yes just, he's just gonna keep coming at like, you ever have those times when you're in trouble like at a corporate gig or some kind of weird room and you're like uh, you, it's just like you know you're in you're you're, you're in trouble like, yeah this is this could go either way and you just say. Fuck it! I'm just rely, just rely on the act. Just, right. just, just 
pull it in tight yeah. and just keep it going. And then slowly you start to gain control just from the material. Yes, yes. That's what Rodney lived by. That's you know? true, but he never lost them is the only difference. Yeah. We would use well, it to get Well, as soon as he back. walks out, you're yeah. laughing. You're like, what is this? Exactly. You're, you're one of the smoothest <laughs> at that. I mean, I, I think about like you do believe in your material in a way. Like you have such polish. I, I remember watching you once. You hosted the Greg Giraldo benefit at the Beacon. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that gig and uh -huh. it was a kind of a hell spot you hosted it people yeah. were still walking in and i was kind of like oh shit i know tom pop is a killer but this is a this is like i'm nervous yeah because this is so bad and you just slowly start crushing oh really and you wouldn't weren't doing any tricks you were just kind of doing your act no just hang on it yeah because once you because that's so you that's what you got and it's yeah. like to start calling audibles and jumping into especially in a room that big mm -hmm. where you, you know there's no like crowd work or other ways to get out of it yeah it's just just believe in it Right. Slow down and just, you know, the stuff's there. You know, you've got it. You know, it's going to, it's solid. Yeah. Ugh. I used to hear those horror stories like back in the day, the comedy cellar would have four people in it. And even if it was empty, you'd have to do your act in case someone walked in. <laughs> so they would see you doing comedy and sit down. And yeah. so your act had to be so good that people could just slide into it randomly. And yeah. that's kind of what you're saying. You just have to be so good yeah. that people will just glom on you slowly right well you both work that way you guys are living on your material there's not a oh lot yeah of, there's not you have real faith in it and it well, well written jokes you know you've got really well written stuff so but don't you get annoyed and frustrated when you're like ah you, now you're on board but you missed some gold back there but i guess you know it's like soldiers we have to like lose them yeah. early in the war <laughs> to, to keep going I'll, it's yeah. it, you're a dude i'll listen to sometimes just because like i'll listen to an album because you're so we're very different but you're a joke guy so mm -hmm. i like, you yeah, know you're same. doing bits about your family and stuff but you do family material in a way that's so it, it just kind of works for anyone, I think. It's so, it, I love your family material. I love your bits about your kids. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it works for like 18 year olds at the Laugh Factory and Because it's so, it's just so honest. Like You paint a picture in a way that's just funny. Like you do a thing right. that Burr does where like, Burr does this too, where like he'll just say the image and it's in your head and you're just laughing. Like you've a bit about, <laughs> I think about a few, we, you, you've been mentioned on this pod a lot, but there's a bit I think about of, uh, you know, you're talking about having- uh, uh, I quote this bit all the, the time. Well, you have three daughters, right? <laughs> I or love two two, daughters, two daughters and a wife. And you're like, yeah, I always dreamed of living in a house with three people who hate everything I love. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you, yeah, see, like just me retelling this bit is getting a laugh in <laughs> here. A it's great like, line. And then you do the whole act out of like, you know, you're sharing the bathroom. They're putting their hand under the door. There's no escape. <laughs> then there's the cat's paw that's under the door, yes. too. Like, you, you paint a picture, that. and I'm like, this is yeah. either happened or it's basically happened. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. You know, it totally happened. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to say the other one. This, I saw you do this at Bananas. I opened for you, I don't know, what was that, 2009 or some shit? Didn't I drive you out there with, with my wife in a minivan? May, we went out two nights. First night was me and you. Second night, I think she was there. Yeah. I remember when Mark was opening for you. I was like, holy shit, you're opening for Tom Papa? I was blown away. Yeah, bananas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, opening in a, you're opening in a side room of a Marriott off a highway? Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't wait. It was like Carnegie Hall back then to me. I was ready. Uh, yeah. But you had a bit where you said, uh, oh, I still think about it. You go, people are like, oh, my God, you got a beautiful wife. You got kids. How 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 do you do it? You go on the road all the time. Like, how do you leave them? It must be so hard. And you go, well, the hardest part is trying not to whistle while I pack. <laughs> like, come on, it doesn't get any better than that. That's gold. That is the whistle. Such, such a great <laughs> whistle. That's a joke that you just get. I mean, it's just like that's. I think the thing is, you just make it. You just make it feel so real. So it's just, I, I think right. that's why it's accessible. Right, right. I mean, right. don't you feel that you connect with younger audiences, yeah. older audiences? That, no, I, mean, I, I, I always kind of, I don't know like the, the why of it, but I, I always feel like you don't have to be the head of the family to, you just have to have been a part of a family. Right, exactly. right. right. Like you just have to have been a kid or a, a daughter or a son or wife. Like we've all know these from all these different yeah. angles. And I do try and express it like from the kid, you know, uh -huh. like like now I have this other this this newer joke that's like coming from the kid's angle. So, yeah, I think it's just unless you're an orphan who never was raised by anybody, you should be able to get the jokes. <laughs> yeah, because even a wife can hear that whistle while I pack joke and be like, I get it. I want to leave, too. Sometimes, yeah, right. You know, so it hits everybody. Yeah. And as, as, as sorry, but as a younger 
audience member or fan like uh just you don't have you don't make it like it has to be like super you know you have to be there like you have mm. to be a part of it it's, it's relatable either way because you're never like huh, you know these kids am i right you know no, like, yeah. like, like, whatever but like you just like you said you paint the picture like and it's like relatable either way from any right perspective oh yeah great. i agree yeah you're not you're not like it's not like oh my old ball and chain it's not that type of material right. you're saying in like a different type of way right, it, right. It, there's more vulnerability to it where you're like i'm like almost a prisoner in my own house yeah. right. it's almost that <laughs> right so i gotta ask like as a guy who started in that era i mean it was patrice it was bill burr it was norton it was DePaulo. these are like Dudes, angry, <laughs> maybe a little, uh, maybe to throw some misogyny, just peppered on top. Whereas you're like a nice guy, married guy. Was that tough, kind of navigating through those ball busters? Because you, but you are friends with those dudes as well. Yeah, yeah. and we, no. we like them as well. Yeah, no, um, Geraldo is like my best friend in comedy, but Gaffigan was also a really yeah. good friend. Oh yeah, and he was kind of off in his own thing. Uh, it was hard in the very beginning when I first like came to the cellar. Um, and, uh, even the before, well, before that, like at the comic strip, it was a little difficult because I, sh I just, that's where I first showed up and I was very, I was more actory out. I would like, I was broad. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I didn't have much, you know, I was just showing up literally. Yeah. So I would act things out a little bit more, but I would kill, like I would do really well. And that didn't go well with the oh. guys that were not like the guys, even the class ahead, like the. Um, like the Louis and the Kevin Brennans and all of that, um, they saw me like as not as a real comic, but I was killing, and you know what I mean. And I did like I, there was a moment where I was like, should I try to kill less? Like, yeah, yeah, which is such a messed up place to be as that's, a comedian. It's that's like what they do to you, yeah, but that's what they do to you. I was like, should I just be like kind of like backing it off? Uh huh. Uh, but I couldn't. I was like, it was the only thing. And I knew what they were saying. Like, I knew what the impression... Like, I was. I was just... I was trying... I didn't have the material to just stand at the mic. Like, mm. I needed to kind of act it out a little bit more and, right. and do that kind of a thing. Well, those dudes are like... A guy like Louie's probably working on, like, a new hour or something. He's trying to, like... Oh, at that point, well, was Well, it he? was before that. It, oh, was, okay. it was earlier than that. And, uh, yeah, he was just uh, mean. He was just straight <laughs> wow. out. He was just straight out mean. Damn. Yeah. Are think, you guys cool now or no? Yeah, like I don't really see him that much, but you know, he was friendlier later on. Um, but mm. yeah, back then he was he was kind of a dick. What I do you What do you think that were. What do you think it was? You think it was? I like, don't know. He was. He hadn't been. He didn't become. He wasn't Louis yet. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so maybe those guys were kind of relentless anger. of like you know really believing their way was the right, right way or whatever. Right. And then you have a guy. A fresh faced guy who's up there like, you know, acting stuff out a little bit more sure. and not like of the New York pedigree, like of that thing yet. Uh -huh. And um, going up like you don't give a shit and like yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is totally cool, but you yeah. don't have to go up to a young comic and be like, I don't like you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Damn. Like it was that aggressive. Damn. And uh and I just kind of played it off. I was like, so we'll be best friends. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, weird because we all follow comics that we don't like following at times, but it's also kind of like, it's New York, man. Figure it out. Right. You know, I, I think like that's the challenge too. And, you know, we're all trying to work on new hours and, you know, the cellar can be a tough place to work on that new shit because you're following some young comic who's bringing the heat. Right. And, and I'm oh, yeah. doing new shit. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, wow, I, I, you know, I got buried a little bit by some young killer there. Yeah. You know, that you're following someone like Dan Daniel Simonson or Sam mm. J who murdered the other night. Right. You know, there's people just straight up murdering. And I'm like, yeah, this is my freshest 15 I have. I yeah. Know. And you picture the audience leaving going, ah, that tall, uh, lanky, kind of ugly guy. So, <laughs> you know, like, hey, I don't know why yeah. they had to mention my looks at the end. They already, <laughs> you know? they already insulted my act. They don't, but yeah. I'm, you know, you, you picture them going home like, he wasn't that good. And you're like, no, I can do it. I just, yeah. you saw, uh, new stuff night you know yeah. that, that kills me and you know it, it, like but so maybe mission, it's that vulnerability is, like yeah. of those guys at the time and you just kind of like you know they want you, you know like we all when you show up it's they don't you don't just get to sit at the table like there's right. an initiation a quiet it's not said but you got to kind of win your way some one of the one of the one of the crew has to think you're good. Yeah. And then they kind of like all of a sudden just like welcome you in. Who was the first and, of that and, crew who welcomed you in? Um, Probably, I don't know, like Kevin Brennan. Hmm. Like Kevin Brennan was like, it was a Brennan, Attell, 
DePaulo, you know, Patrice was just emerging, but those guys were like the really? juniors. Yeah, like we, and then it was, we were all that next kind of class. Uh-huh. So those guys, I mean, I remember being at Boston Comedy Club and waiting to go on. It was like this Monday night. They had this amazing Monday night thing where you had to go and like beg to get on and yeah. the regulars would come in, this small place. And <laughs> it was like this, it was really like a, a hornet's nest of yeah. like, and it, it was intense and great. And just seeing Kevin Brandon like walk in in a trench coat you know wow. like just walking to the bathroom the like shotgun. oh fuck he's he's here <laughs> you know what i yeah, mean yeah. and he was he was like he wasn't off the rails mean he was just old, old kevin mean you know right right and uh <laughs> uh and it wasn't you know and then atel just like you know and and you think back like they were just finding their way it's like when you think of like your dad like when you picture like oh he was my age right when he did that right. like when you think of like kevin he was just a kid too and he was it was a lot of bravado and yeah. trying to they were the guys and finding their way and doing their thing and i'm all i'm all for you have to chip away and and find your way in yeah um louis was the only one that like outright right up to me just like Yikes. gave me shit and not shit like hey you're doing this like i remember these two comics in la what um I, i'll mention them off the air but uh and the one guy ca- was crushing and came off and the other comic was like you know if you had really good material if you ha- actually had material you'd be amazing and it was a total douche thing to say and the Whoa. guy did not take it well but the guy critiquing him was like trying to say you're amazing but you need to just focus on the jokes and you'll fuck you'll be unstoppable uh-huh it's look. almost like a basketball player just like doing fucking ball handling shit and it's like take a shot dude <laughs> right. shoot yeah. the fucking ball yeah yeah i know what he's saying i yeah. i get that but yeah I so mean, it's like a slow creep like kevin was like one of the first guys who just would like you know start talking to you in the hall wow. it's like you know that kind of thing and then Atel took a while how dark were things that kevin brennan was that's the warm was guy thinking. yeah, yeah right crazy. exactly it was Those pretty rough times. and it wasn't like it was because like seller didn't have crowds Wow. And you know that Boston was like this rough place, and you, comic strip would be great on the weekends, and it was like comedy had fallen on its ass yeah. when we showed up. So it was like kind of this new kind of frontier in a way, and everybody was just kind of scrambling. So they, so it was a little difficult for then. But then going to the cellar for the first time, like back to your original question of like how all those killers mean killers, you know, like yeah. Patrice and all of our guys. Uh, I did have a feeling like when I first got there, like I was following a tell every night. Like oh my she God. just kept putting me after a tell. And I was like, well, I guess I've got to like, I don't know, lean against the wall or like get a cigarette. <laughs> like, how am I going to, I got to be, I got to try and be, I was cursing more. Like, right. and I don't really curse in my life, but I was like, right, you fucking, right? And the audience was just like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you didn't even know me, but ah, you could tell, like, what are, tell. You, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until I really just put the blinders on and didn't watch him or didn't watch anybody mm. and just waited in isolation until my spot that I could calm down. Oh, that's good advice. And not start, the influence was too great of all of this stuff. So I was just like, just go be alone, and then I then could, could be authentic. So then I could walk up and just be myself, yeah. not knowing what happened before me, just do my thing and not think of like where it fit. Like I wasn't. It didn't matter that Patrice or Bill Burr or whatever was or Geraldo was going on because I didn't really know what they were doing. That's good. And I was just doing my thing, and then it slowly emerged like. Tom's getting up there talking about his his girlfriend. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and and it wasn't like it had to come from the outside. Uh huh. Does that what make about, sense? How did your friendship with Greg start? He was the first person, I, first comedian I ever saw. I walked wow. into on uh, June twelfth, nineteen ninety three. I had a bringer show at the um, at the New York Comedy Club which was upstairs from this like cowboy bar. And it was like five in the afternoon, so it was like light out mm. in the summer. And uh, I just called it from my apartment in New Jersey and got the date and uh, and brought my friends in and walked in. And the only other guy on the show, because it was five o'clock, uh, was Greg. Greg was just sitting there waiting, pale face, no beard, sweating, uh. scared out of his mind. Just like shaking, like, how's it going, man? And I'm, I'm good, good. And I'm just equally as freaked out. Yeah. And we just started talking. And we both like liked each other immediately. And we went up into this, you know, half ass show. It was my first set of my life. Wow. And, uh, and, uh, 
we exchanged numbers quickly and that was it that was it i knew then that like i was going to be a comedian that was it that was all sewn up after that horrible five minutes yep and then uh and I knew that, you know, I'm going to, and I, and I have to attach myself to this guy. Yeah. Because, uh, he thinks I'm funny. I think he's funny and this is going to be, going to be okay. Was it wild? What? Cause he, he came up pretty quick. I mean, he just had it. He was just yeah. gifted. Yeah. Was it wild? But I guess you guys stayed together. We did. Toe to toe. So that must have been fun coming up with a friend, like going through the ranks to TV. And- it was like him and Gaffigan and myself, at least like in the New York scene. Mm. Uh, we all quickly were hosting shows mm. of like all that bringer stuff. You know, we quickly just emerged and started getting hosting stuff or like moving out of the bringer stuff and letting us get a spot. And, you know, we all the three of us moved quickly. And the one who was the biggest doubt was Gaffigan. Really? Because. Because he was sticking to his thing. Uh-huh. And Greg and I were like, I was really loud and moving around like crazy. And Greg actually told me, you know, you don't have to lunge when you tell jokes. <laughs> you could just <laughs> you could just tell him, like, you've got stuff. Just do it. And I was like, oh, okay. And uh, and Greg would kill. Did you he bounce did... bits with Greg a lot? Yeah. You, like, workshop stuff? Uh, no. But no. you'd be like, hey, But we tag good. stuff and yeah, that kind yeah. of We never, like, sat and wrote together. Gotcha. Or that kind of thing. But Gaffigan would just be like, we... Greg would kill, I would kill, loud, blah, 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 you know, just all pure energy and fear. And then, uh, and Gaffin would get up and just start pacing on this stage like, oh, he's your burp, burp, burp. He's, <laughs> oh, why is he saying that? What you doing? And we we're like, you guys got to get it together. <laughs> like that guy is just, he's, he's going down. He doesn't, does he know he's bombing? Like, wow. and he just stuck to it. He just stuck to his wow. style and just stuck to it. And then of course, wow started crushing with that and yeah then the rest is history that's but, hilarious. yeah but we all rose like quickly like you guys like from what i could tell from the outside like you would you guys and joe and like you just kind of like you were at the same pacing yeah just well, having I mean? friends like that like you had greg and jim i mean having mark and joe list and yeah and the other people in our crew is like we had such a we had such a crazy talented crew like yeah i, I watch mark and list and you know all the people phil hanley all these seller comics mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like, damn, he's got another new bit that's yeah. so funny. You know, we're talking about how, like, Phil just would shit on us off stage in a way that made us laugh. So, like, <laughs> yeah. having friends yeah. like that where you're like, oh, God. shit, it makes you want to be just funnier. It just makes you yeah. want to, your act, you, you're like, I got to put more work into my act. Yeah. You know? I know. And, they, I know. and Yeah. And I had this thing where a girl I was with, um, her her father passed away and, and uh, I had to kind of like take care of her, and I dropped comedy, at, like a year in. You're like, fuck! And, I gotta miss a weekend at Bananas. Yeah, and I wasn't even doing Bananas yet. Like yeah. it was just it was just city spots. I don't mm-hmm. even know if I had a road gig yet. And it was that it was that early, like a year, you know, like when you're doing like one spot every two weeks, kind of a thing. And and um, so anyway, I I just started working, and I just felt like I had to take care of her and not do comedy. I'm like, I, you know, it was all fucked up, like. She, I, I got to get a job and make some money and replace uh, her dad. Yeah. And Geraldo called me every single day. I worked in a little ad agency and he called me every day. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Let's go. What are you, what, what are you doing? You got to come back. What are you doing? No, wow. I know. I just need, you know, if I, if I just need to make some money, we'll fucking make money. Let's go. And he just every day. Wow. And that's that, that's like the real personification of what you're saying. It's like, you encouraged each other. Yes. You're like even fucking around. You're like you're pulling each other and pushing each other. Yeah. At the same time. And when you're that new, those those days are essential. You need every essential. set, every spot. You can't take a week off. You'll fall behind. They'll yeah. they'll, they'll get higher than you. So it's yeah. You yeah. can't take that time yeah, off. Mark so was... fuck that girl's dead. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> he was a cock block for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Mark was another one where like he was so hardcore. I mean. There, it's funny when you start in stand up, you kind of are with your friends and yeah. you kind of go your own way for a while because you have to. You have to go your own way. Sure. But you stay in touch. You you know. But I have friends who like I started with, and then you just kind of don't see them for a while because they're working the door somewhere. You're right. working the door somewhere. Mm-hmm. Then you, uh, you come back together, and it's like a moment hasn't even passed. You, I know. you have that weird friendship. But yeah. yeah, Mark was so hardcore. I remember Mike Lawrence was so oh, hardcore. Oh, yeah. God. I mean, Mike, if you don't know Mike. I love listening. Mike. I used, yeah. I, I, yeah. Hell I, of a I, I, Mike opened for me a couple times Phenomenal. and then I, 
He wrote on a couple of things that I was doing. I just that guy was brilliant. He's a machine. Machine. He's like a savant. That guy. Yeah, he really is. He and, really is. And he's just a you know. But he was a dude. When I was like, holy shit, this guy at open mics is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> he would judge you. Whoever he goes up after, he's they're getting torn to shreds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you wasted your two and a half minutes just ruining a guy's uh, night. <laughs> but then you know. But then Mike starts getting success. He becomes like you know. He, he starts, chilled out. He chilled out. Right. And he's such a good writer like he was so fun to be around and so fast guys mm -hmm. like dan st germain we started with like comics yes. who were like so funny and you yeah. keep pushing through and i always tell young comics you're like what's your advice i'm like surround yourself with driven funny people yeah, yeah it, will, it will change your life that's it, perfect if, like they're, a... if they're motivated but not annoying yeah, yeah right yeah. right i was thinking about that today because i had to go to uh bobby's studio to do a bunch of stuff bobby kelly yeah and uh and i'm walking i'm walking down third and crossing mcdougal like in the middle of the street and it's just that quiet morning village thing you know mm -hmm. like and you know when i lived here forever it was like and i just as i and i guess like, i had you guys on my mind as i was like crossing and i was like this it just brought me back to when I was like so excited that yes. I could see the cellar. I was so comfortable enough to like go sit at the cellar during the day. And yeah. That kind of thing. <laughs> right. And it really is like we all had our packs and our moments. And I know you guys had like your time was the time and my time yes, was the time. So true. And now that these guys who I don't know who are there and they're emerging and they're going to build the same thing. It's right. so good. It's, it's good so great. And it's good when you see new guys who are you know and they're just crushing and you're, and you're excited for them because you're like oh my god you yeah i want to know how cool this is or you see i'll see like young comics bouncing bits and i get like happy i'm like oh my god they're yeah like, yeah totally. they're hungry who is the uh who's the kid i think he's from atlanta oh mike roland yeah very funny. short guy really funny very yeah kind yeah. of pretty short guy yeah he's funny yeah, yeah i really liked him and and i you know, I th we I think of everybody as the same age. I just think everybody's <laughs> like from Colin to that guy. We're all kind of like just yeah, we're, we're not comics. that far off in years or whatever. And I just like complimented him, and he was like bugging out. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, oh right, like I forget, like this would be like you know DePaulo saying, holy shit, you can really <laughs> tell jokes. I would have been like riding that for like two weeks. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah, it's really impressive. It's really can, like I, a... can I ever ask her something? Could I have a, another a martini, but just do it without the juice? Sure. Just Ooh. do it straight up, clean. I'll do one, you know what? And I'm, I'm going to drop these them. olives into it. No problem. And I'm going to join them, but with new olives. Absolutely. Sweet. Thank you. This is nice having a bartender. Oh, oh my God. God. Beer Jew. Beer Jew. Beer Jew. <laughs> Beer Jew. Dude, uh, Colin Quinn. Uh, is a guy like we talk about Colin a lot on here. You get a lot. Your name gets mentioned a lot. We've quoted your bits a lot. I feel yeah, like that's good. And, but you know, uh, so you and Greg were tight. I mean, that's like Greg's a guy we talk about so much in here because you know we all know he was brilliant. I feel like he yeah. should have been a bigger comic. You know, obviously he passed away so young. I mean, like I remember you in the documentary. Is that like is that insane to just be in a documentary You're like this guy should have been one of the biggest comics ever yeah it was yeah he would have been the timing of it if he had if he had stayed straight yeah if he had handled that he would have um i think he would have taken the daily show after john whoa wow i felt like because you know a, um, comedy central loved him he, comedy central oh, yeah. loved him a uh smart as a whip yeah a latin voice ah, Columbia. A good crossover but he never played that up and i think that he, in a way hurt Maybe a little bit. With the bit. industry, not with comedy. Help with us. A little bit. But I think, like, it also, the times were, he didn't do it in a time when it was kind of, it wasn't emerging, like, as a cultural phenomenon. Right, like, you know right. what I mean? Like, they weren't, they didn't, in a way, have, like, that cultural place yet. I just felt like the time he was going to be, and the, the stuff he talked about, it was all very political and, like, today. It wasn't, like, you know, evergreen. It was, I'm, I'm going after all the shit we were dealing with right now. Yes. I just felt like he was our... He was going to be our Bill Maher or John Stewart. Wow. Material wise, poise wise, and then his in his uh, in his Hispanic way, mm. like he was. I felt like that was going to be his path. That was going to be the thing that he deserved it. He, he would have done he really it. Deserved it. He really could have done it because he wow. he was as quick as a whip. He was hyper intelligent. Oh yeah. For the folks at home, he was he went to Columbia 
college. I think he was a uh, valedictorian or whatever you call it. Then he went to Harvard Law. Right. And then he was, you know, top of his class in that. And then he became a lawyer. And then he just gave it up yeah. to be a comedian. Yeah, that's when I met him. I mean, he really was. And he went to St. Regis in, in New, New the York high school. Through through. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, he, he was a. Uh, he was a master at social commentary. It's like when guys like that die, you're just like selfishly as a comedy fan. You're like, I want to hear what you would have said know. about Trump and Biden. I know. I want to hear what you would have. The vaccine, the va- COVID, all that shit. Who else? Patrice, the Patrice same way. Patrice is the same thing. He would have loved The same Trump. way. Yeah. <laughs> he would have. <laughs> he would have. That, that motherfucker's yeah. so funny. <laughs> you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, he would have loved it. Yeah. Can I ask you about Seinfeld? Because I know, like, you know, you tour with Jerry a lot. And uh, I mean, I how used did, to. How, you used to, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but how did that? I know, I know you do your own thing for a long time, but like, yeah. how did that start? Um, New York, uh, stand up New York. I was at stand up New York. He, after he did his show, he was coming back, poking around in the clubs. He wasn't doing sets yet. He was just checking out the scene, and he was just kind of coming and hanging out and watching stuff. And two nights in a row, you know, at New York, at stand up New York, you could see through the window to the yep. bar. Yep. And two nights in a row, he walked in while I was on stage. Wow! Was and, he uh, shooting the documentary, or was no, he just okay? This was, this was like Did a year you see him before peek that. In while you were on there, yeah, I saw him like you know watching through the through the thing. And uh, oh my god! When I saw him come in the next night, like the second night, I quickly abandoned what I was working on and showed him <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> to the uh, yeah. You're, you're looking at your notepad. What else? Right, here's my closer. Yeah. yeah, play the hits. Yeah, and I came off stage, and he took me aside, and he was like, "You're really funny." Wow. You're really funny. And I was just like, ah, right? It's like Wayne Gretzky coming yes. up at, after hockey practice. And, and uh, How long in were you as a comedian? Um, that was 90. That was like 97. Thank you, Beard. 98. Thank you, Beard. When did the show, when did the show, uh, the show ended in 99. 98. So you were His show five years ended in? in 98. Thank you. Yeah, because I had met my, I met Cynthia uh, at like in 98. And then his thing, so 99, I guess, is when I met him. Do you know, you got the show? 98? Oh, you have it up there? Look at you. Sorry, I don't know if this is your job. I just saw a laptop. <laughs> yeah, no, it's him. Matt's He's all over it. Oh, 98, you're right. 98, yeah. So that was May of 98. So I either met him like the end of 98. I think he took a year off. So I, I'd wow. call it 99. 99. So I'm six years in. Six years in. That's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. That's pretty new. It is pretty new. But he was very cool to you. He was super cool. And, you know, we kind of like had the same sense of humor. And, you know, and I, it was a, it was a, it was the greatest gift to me as a comedian. Like when people ask like what your break is, it was meeting him. Wow. Because he, once people said like, once he like endorsed me, like people started paying a little more attention. Mm -hmm. And, but more than that, just being around him. Like when you talk about all the angry guys at the cellar. Yeah. Like I didn't write, I didn't work like that. I didn't get go out and drink at the end of the night. Right. I was, I wanted to sit with my pad in the day and r- work on my jokes and go do my thing and then maybe go get something to eat with my girlfriend and go home, mm-hmm. you know, drink a little bit and hang late at the cellar. But I wasn't like getting high. And, and I was like, I was longing for an example. And then he came in and he's like, yeah, you get your pad and you go to work in the day. <laughs> and then you go do your set and you go home and you work on it some more. And right. that's how you do it. And it was like a confirmation that my way it was that my way was a way. Yes. You know what I mean? Like and kudos for you for not conforming and just being like, Well, I'll just become an angry guy on stage. Like <laughs> yeah. you're stuck to who you are. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, there's no choice, you know. Yeah. I mean, but that on. really confirmed so I just soaked everything in that I could. It was just like a, a just the way he carried himself off stage, the way he just treated the greatest. I call him the comedy chiropractor. Like mm. anytime I'd feel fucked up about my set or my place in the business or what, whatever any kind of funk we all get, one call with him, and he just made you realize we are the luckiest people in the world to be a stand-up comedian and be in a world of stand-up. You would hang up every phone call. I didn't even have to talk about my shit. I would just talk with him and he'd throw out bits and we'd just bullshit and make each other laugh. And I would hang up and be like, oh, everything's okay. Uh, everything's everything's all right, you know? He just had such a love for it and such yes. a respect for it. And he can tell when you do, and that means the world to him. That's why I think he, he gloms on to people who also yeah. have that love that he has. I have to go back just because it's 
been in my head since we did it. That uh, that line that you said back at Bananas about uh, whistle while you pack. Yes. Jerry and I had a, a disagreement about whose line that was. Uh oh. Yeah, and I could s- swear like it was my line, not even a stand-up line. And that when we would go on the road, and we like he'd send the car to get me, and then they would pick him up and then go. And then when I did the line on a show, and he was like, "That's my line." Oh. And I was like, "I don't think so. I think it's my line." And I really, truly, it was one of those things like. No one's out to fuck each other. This is just like two comics, like you know, who were so connected and together yeah. for you know eight years of almost every weekend, and it's just this gray area. But he's Jerry wow. Seinfeld, so I give him that line. Oh no! Yeah, you I gotta kind of, I gotta kind of give it to him. You, you gotta give I didn't it, record it, back, it, pay it forward, but I do feel like you know, that's weird. It was yeah, it was one of is those that things. Not special viewers, no. Wow! Damn, no. I thought it was uh-uh. just the Mandela effect. Damn! You yeah, bring, you ever but see him and go, "Hey, how about the how's that pack line doing?" Yeah, well, you know, because it's been out there and people do bring it up every once in a while. Oh, and a coupe glass. Thank you. Wow, that's uh, wild. Yeah, it's a little bit of a this strange area. If Seinfeld ever said that to me, like that's my line, I'd get that pit in my stomach. Like, ah, oh, shit! Did I did I steal from you? But it's uh, hard. You could just pause He's, and say, "Jerry, you don't have enough." <laughs> yeah, but he's such you know I don't know I mean look it's just out of respect it's like of course no he's a legend yeah, I mean I'm I, fucking I, I, around I give it to here. you but I would but it's such a great line and I really thought it was mine and uh, so yeah but I can't Thank but you, I see uh, that you're yeah. cut from the same cloth as Jerry and I and I get that I mean you, you're an old school comic the way Jerry is like very inspired by Robert Klein I see like uh-huh. you, you're a dude that could have been a, like a Tonight Show guy in the 70s or 80s too <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. I, yeah I think we think we mention your jokes all the time because you have great drinking jokes to him I think of the how does the one go where you're uh, you talk about like drinking over the sink you know what I'm talking about yeah um, how is that again? Uh, I've been I've been drinking a lot more since since I had a family I think uh, mm-hmm. I've been drinking a lot more and not that fun happy hour woo woo kind of drinking it's more like standing alone at the kitchen sink kind of drinking <laughs> <laughs> it's so so relatable yeah, I've been yeah. There. God bless America and God bless sheath underwear Mark's wearing them right now I'm, I'm saving them for the weekend sheath underwear <laughs> keeps your balls off your leg it's hot as hell out there. Yep. The idea for Sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton, during his second tour in Iraq. This is this is a real patriot here and a, and a nice guy. If it worked for him, it'll work for you. I wear Sheath underwear; they're great. You do too. Oh they're, yeah. I look forward to wearing them. There's your you know there's your pairs. You're like, eh, and then there's your Sheath. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> so true. Support the show. Support this awesome veteran-owned company. Go to SheathUnderwear.com. Use promo code Drunk and get twenty percent off your first order. Every order comes with Sheath, 100% money-back guarantee. That's SheathUnderwear.com, promo code DRUNK. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your ball bag. Hell yeah! Looking for something different to cover up that hole in your wall? Displate is that cool new metal poster that you'll want in every room. They have millions of cool designs available featuring gaming, movies, comics, and anime. Displate also features officially licensed designs including Star Wars, Netflix, and many more. Uh, lots of cool stuff you can get on this site. It only takes 20 seconds to hang a display. No power tools needed, no damages, uh, no frustrations. You know, I'm a very irritable person. I have no uh, housing skills, so this comes in handy. Once you mount one, you can switch out a new plate in a flash. With every one that you buy, this plate plants a tree. Click the link in our description to see some of our favorite disc plates and save up to 29%. Get 25% off when you buy one or two and 29% off when you buy three or more. Discounts will automatically be applied to your cart when you click the link or use code DRUNK when you visit DisPlate.com. That's DisPlate.com, code DRUNK, or click that link in our show notes. Okay, no matter how hot it gets outside, keep your bong ice cold. Just freeze it, pack it, and rip it. The hot smoke passes through the frozen piece, cooling down your smoke as you inhale. Your smoke's so cold, they'll be calling you Chili Willy. I love this bubbler. I mean, why did this take so long to get invented? My friends used to put ice in the middle of their bong. Yeah. It never worked. It didn't It didn't help. This is way better. They perfected it. They nailed it. Don't have that hot throat, that sting. Forget it. Those are from the past. It's like the frozen beer mug, but for smokers. 
Perfect way to put it. Freeze pipe is non-toxic, freezes faster than water, and stays frozen longer. Freeze pipe cools down the smoke by hundreds of degrees. Freeze pipe is taking care of the bozos. Go to thefreezepipe.com. Use code DRUNK to save 10% off your first order. Get yourself a new bong, pipe, or bubbler today. That's the, T-H-E, freezepipe.com. Code DRUNK to save 10%. Freeze pipe, keeping it cool while you're high as a kite. All right, so you said um, you said uh, if there's any jokes that I'm working on, uh, we we welcome it. Oh, please. you do? You got a newbie? Uh, yeah, it's a pr- pretty much a newbie. And I I did Colin's spot last night at the Pussycat because he wasn't around, so I ran my longer set. And uh, I'm really hesitating from saying the hour. I think there's a there's a disease in comedy that we're all working on the hour, doing the hour. Everyone's working on the new hour. You have you have your hour. Are you doing your hour. Why, I, I don't even say the YouTube anymore. Yeah, I'm done with all of <laughs> I'm it. like what's why, how are we all lemmings all of a sudden? Like <laughs> can we just? I'm I'm doing I'm working on my new um, comedy film, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it doesn't really fit in the act because it's new and there's no place for it. But, yeah, but um, uh, it's a joke about uh how there's um there's no rules anymore like we can might we can do whatever we want now that everything's collapsing there's no real rules we kind of like we need some new ways of of doing things and f- five billionaires have all the money now uh we have all these problems only five guys have the money let's let's kidnap some billionaires right let's why not? You know, let's go after. Let's go after some billionaires. There's, yeah, they're out there. They've got. They've. They've got the money. You can be a billionaire. I'm all for it. I'm all for you achieving and changing the world. Great. You're a billionaire. You get to be a billionaire for 24 hours. Ah, and then ah. if you don't start giving that shit away by morning, right. and helping some people out, we're coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a guy in my kid. There's a guy at my kid's school who needs a leg. He needs a new leg. And not even a real leg, a fake leg. This guy needs a fake leg. I don't know what a fake leg costs. Like a starter kit leg is like 50 grand, 30 grand, and they can't afford it. So what's their, what do all these people, all their resources, what can they come up with? A bake sale. Yay. (laughs) Let's have a bake sale. Let's make snickerdoodles and sell them for 50 cents a piece. Yay. Should we charge a dollar? No, that would be greedy. (laughs) At the end of the day, in the hot sun, selling snickerdoodles, they make $37.50. If they have 700 more bake sales, Mr. Johnson's still hopping around town i like it i love it it's it's super <laughs> timely too because the, the billionaires the bezos the Musk, we they don't give uh, the money to us but they have all of it and we <laughs> we're the ones who need the money so what if it's what if an angle could be billionaires are the new santa you know like i need uh-huh. a new leg dear mr mr musk you know and you send him <laughs> the, the wish list instead of santa <laughs> just start like in uh it's a what in a miracle on 34th street right. where they just start dumping letters on his desk <laughs> yes, yes. and I then on, see- on christmas day we can have we can sit on his lap <laughs> you know i want to see bezos in like an actual uh blowtorch uh sled it's electric he's just floating <laughs> yeah, through the air penis shape dumping shit yeah. yeah he could totally do that the he blue could. origin sled <laughs> right right or, exactly. i love the idea that they've like yeah. you're already a billionaire You've got the head start. Hire some fucking dope security, or you're going down. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like Hunger Games. Right? It's like, it's like, it's like we, we used to evade Iraq. Now we invaded uh, Bezos's compound. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We need right. oil. Yeah. And how are you going to stop all of us if we all come after you <laughs> <Yeah>. at once? <laughs> the front line might get it, but some of us are getting over that wall. Yeah. Maybe this that's is a- why Musk is boring. Because he's like, when they come for me, I'm, I'm ready to get out. <laughs> well, this is America. You can achieve your yeah. dreams. To a point. Yeah. Then we'll come Let's not after get you. Greedy. Fuck the IRS. Yeah. They're gonna we're gonna knock you down. <laughs> Fuck the IRS. Watch out for the US. We're coming at you. That's, I mean, it's, it's really funny. It could be. I you know I'm our a little... shit is usually way worse than we run. Yeah, we usually run oh, really? way looser. <laughs> yeah. We run way looser. I feel like my shit's either working or it's fucking terrible. <laughs> That's my shit. Yeah. Usually. I feel like uh I'm a little leery of uh billionaires because I know but it should be at the same time. 
It's like it's. You should run this bit late, by Jerry. Late night PBI. Yeah, I know. <laughs> late night PBI. Jerry, night what do you say we kidnap all the billionaires? <laughs> like fuck you, <laughs> fuck piece you. of shit. This I'm sucks. almost a billionaire. <laughs> Drop the bit. Not a good bit. I'm close to being a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you ever want to work with me again? <laughs> I'll kill you, you piece of shit. <laughs> Are you in the Pop Tart movie? I'm not. Oh, thank Are you? God, I'm not either. Uh, I thought it was some kind of message. Yeah, it is a message. Ah, it is a message. Damn it, because I know a couple of comics who are in it, and I'm like, that guy's in it. Gaffigan. In it. I heard some comics whistling all the way to that movie. Ah. So just whistling. He wrote that. <laughs> Gaffigan, Gaffigan came uh, came over for dinner because he's in L. A. And uh, I invited him over for dinner uh, a couple Sundays ago. Oh, and, you make your own bread. But he came. <laughs> <laughs> and he came in and. Uh, he immediately like wanted to diffuse the obvious like elephant in the room, which is, um, why aren't you in the movie? Uh, I feel like it should be. It's in the 1950s, like guys making pop tarts. It should be you and Ryan Hamilton and me all running through the hallway. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> you are like what's for dinner? Pop tarts, be. actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you're such an old school movie guy. You're in The Informant with Matt. Oh Heyman. my God, that's right. What, how, what was that experience like? Amazing. Amazing. That he's, was the first time. He seems like a cool as fuck guy. The coolest guy. Yeah. He's been at the he's, cellar a few times. Yeah, he's the coolest guy. He's exactly like he would not disappoint in any hopefulness you have for him being like a good guy you could hang with. And loves comedy. Really? Him and Ben used to when they first came to L.A. They would just go to the improv. They had no friends. They didn't know. You know, they were making their way, and they would come sit in the improv, which you know didn't have much of a crowd at the time. Mm -hmm. And Excuse me, and uh, they would just watch comedian. They watch like Alan Havy. Wow, and we want Rick Havy Overton. On, we want because Hay Havy's, I think, the oldest guy we can get on here who would still drink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <That's> true. Yeah, <laughs> Havy's, <laughs> Havy's a, a hilarious. Oh, if God. you guys don't know Alan Havy, YouTube is Letterman sets. It's oh great. yeah, I mean, Beast. you might know him as Lou Avery from Mad Men. Yeah, Alan he's Havy. a good actor. He's, he's a ton of stuff. An excellent, really good actor. actor. The, the he was in the movie. Informant with me. Oh, yeah. is that yeah. right? Yeah. There you go. He was um he billions. Was, he's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's really good. And do you ever see his talk show? I've heard of it. I've no, never seen it. So one. good. It was on Ha, <laughs> which was <laughs> the original. It was like the original. It was like the Comedy Channel and Ha, and they merged and became Comedy Central. I think right. that's the way it went down. I think so. And I was just out of college, and I wasn't a comic yet. hadn't done a set yet. And I would watch him do this like late night weird talk show. He had the audience of one. Where it was just one person that would write in, and they put a little um, velvet rope around them, and they would be the audience member for the show. Uh, and he would do great bits. He was really smooth and funny. Yeah, he was cool. He had Loudon Wainwright He's so on the cool. show. Wow. Yeah, it was like he was really. And then I got to meet him. Like that was like a quick lesson in comedy that you can get to your idols really fast. Yes. You don't have to like get parts and really you could just like walk in and they're gonna be there right <laughs> in the back. Yeah, it was Wait, pretty great. You were saying something. Um, I was talking about Alan Havy and the informant. Oh, uh, the, the informant. informant. Yes, the informant. Uh, that Matt is a, was a huge comedy fan, and uh, so he's such a cool like. He's always thinking jokes and just hanging around all that kind of stuff. And I got that was the first film I did with them, and I auditioned, and I think it's I got it because I look like uh, the guy. It was a real story. Oh, okay. And um, the first scene. It was at this house. So Matt, Matt knew you were a comic. Matt knew I was a comic. And uh, I, the, the scene was I come out of the, he, he, I come out of the house and he's talking to me. He's in trouble. I'm his boss. And then a car pulls up and we do the scene in the, in the headlights of this car. And uh, we, we kind of like meet for the first time and someone's making noise and Matt starts quoting uh, Matt starts quoting uh, Tom Waits. Ah. He's like, "What's he building in there?" <laughs> What's, you know, that song by Tom Waits. Yeah. What's he building in there? It's just like this abstract song. So I'm like, "All right, this dude's quoting Tom Waits right off the bat. All right, this is going to be cool." So then we go to run it and I come out and Matt's like complaining and I'm all freaked out and we do this thing and they're like, "Um, are right, you want to want to run it again?" And the car comes up and they go, oh, "You want to run it again?" And they're like, okay. So we go to do it again. And I'm thinking we're still in rehearsal. And uh, they're like, all right, that's good. Yep, moving on. And I'm like, I, I thought we were just rehearsing. And you don't want to act like you don't know what, what, how movies work. Yeah, yeah. So I like, got someone on the side. I'm like, 
what what's up? I didn't even see Soderbergh. Like yeah. where's Soderbergh? I had met him earlier, but where's he didn't even there's no cameras here. What do you mean? Wow. We're moving on. Soderbergh is in the car that pulls up. What? In the back seat, holding his own camera between his legs and shooting the scene that way. Wow. And he clocked us twice. I thought we were, we were rehearsing, we were just doing it. And they And he did that on purpose. And I don't think he did it to. I don't. I think he was thinking probably more about holy shit his camera position and stuff. And he probably yeah. assumed that, that I know. Like it's, they probably said a word, yeah, and act like that meant like and this is were, for real. <laughs> you worked with him a couple of times. You did a Liberace movie. So with yeah. Him, right? So then yes. I worked on. Um, I did the Liberace movie with him, and the Nick. Damn. And how, how uh, was it Mike Douglas? Oh, the coolest. Really? Oh my god. You just hear that voice. Yeah. And you're in the same room as that voice. Wow. You're like, Damn. oh. God tried to God. take that voice away just because of Catherine Zeta Jones' sweet vagina. How dare he? <laughs> right. How dare, How they? dare he? <laughs> yes. Don't you ever deprive us of that sweet Michael Douglas <laughs> voice. <laughs> what a good husband. What an icon. He is he is an icon. He was oh, all yeah. he was dressed as he was dressed as as Liberace in like this really flamboyant, like giant thing. And I played like he had the his, camera between uh, his legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I played his uh, tour manager, and we're not we're not mic'd. We're just off on the side. It's Matt's scene with whoever, and uh, and they're running it. And M- Michael and I are just making pretend small talk in the background of the movie. And he's like, "Yeah, so how's it going? Yeah, we're we gonna go tour. And yeah." And Soderbergh's like two three takes and you move on like he's quick he knows mm-hmm. what he wants and this one's going like four five six takes of the scene and at some point uh he turns to me he goes in the liberace voice he's like man he's really doing a lot of takes i really gotta take a dump <laughs> <laughs> oh wow uh, <laughs> michael douglas Holly yeah Royalty, you're like, holy shit <laughs> he is Holly. what's like a, what's like the best michael douglas movie ever what, fatal what? attraction wall street basic wall instinct street. oh yeah that was hot sexy what about wall, um wall street's badass yeah wall street gecko my god he's in a movie called the game what, which is the game is great mm-hmm. great movie david fincher yeah uh, what's his face sean penn's in that mm-hmm. uh yeah that's great so any and he produced Cuckoo's Nest. Is that right? Yeah. He produced Cuckoo's Nest, and his father wanted with... the role. Wow. He was, he was roommates with uh, Danny DeVito at the time, I think. Oh. No, yeah, Cuckoo's Nest is fucking incredible. Oh, oh Disclosure, God. that was a hot one. He was like the, the hot guy for he a while. He was like the guy who fucked. Romancing yes. the Stone. Yes. There I you mean, go. There's a great, I wonder if we could find, there's an, uh, cl- a Black Tonight Rand. Show with him, Danny DeVito. Uh huh. In Romancing the Stone, and who is the woman in it? Kathleen it Turner. Kathleen, yeah, and the three of them are out there, hammered, smoking cigars, Whoa. and just trashed. And there's a lot of innuendo of like what went on Ooh, on the thing. And they're like, I like that. And the three of them are just Kathleen Turner, man. She was something. Body Heat. Remember Ooh, that shit? Do I know Body Heat? And body Heat. That's a classic. So I lost my hymen. <laughs> uh, wait, can you, can you tell the Steve so, Martin story at so some do you point? Think, wait, but do you think do you think that uh, do you think that um, the billionaire thing is worth work, working on? Yeah, yes, oh, yeah, we definitely. Fuck, we, we, we were we laughing. Eighteen tags on that. Yeah, yeah it's definitely yeah, good. Right. It's a great idea. Worth it's working. a rich you should, premise. You should hear the horse shit we're throwing at yeah, week yeah. to week. <laughs> what do you got? What's the deal oh with God. cucumbers? My, I mean, I'm embarrassed to break out whatever shit I have in my phone right now because that was like. That was like a home, but we're throwing out like premises usually. That was killer. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, my, um, that's a done deal. No, it has a ways to go. What do I have? All right, all right. Let's see. Checking the old. See, I got horse shit here. Being I got white terrible is like bits. being a big-breasted woman. Yeah, mine uh, are like throwaways. I got this one about liberals, uh, how they love guns in movies, but they, but they don't want to oh, be real. Oh, this is good. Yeah, I ran this by Norman the uh-huh. other day. I'll bring this up. I just want to make sure this wasn't like a bit he had, but I said, you know, liberals love guns and movies, but you don't want to be near them in real life. I'm like, yeah, is that crazy that I can separate the art from the artist? Is that <laughs> weird? It's like, uh, you know, I look at guns the way I look at R. Kelly from an entertainment standpoint, outstanding. <laughs> don't want them near a high school. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new one. That's I don't see good. what else. Like uh, Mark, what do you got? I don't know. I hope you don't <laughs> have anything. Entertainment standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> what is, do you got? 
you, I hope you don't have a bit like this because it sounds like it might be something you would have. But hey, man. Um, <laughs> having a one night stand with me is like watching a trailer for the whole relationship. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it might be exciting at first, but then I'll just totally uh, give away too much and let you down in the end. I, I don't have anything like that, but it's so funny that I have a one night stand bit I just wrote it down. But no, it's not okay. like that's I'm, nothing like what I have. That does, I feel like there's a lot more here. That's yeah. literally just the they, you know the bullet. I wrote point. this down for one night stands. Hold on. Uh it's amazing how quickly you change your opinion of someone after a one night stand, like the night of. I'm like, I'll move to Dallas. You know, the next <laughs> morning I'm like, if you died, I would feel nothing. Uh, <laughs> that's what yeah. I wrote down. <laughs> yeah, see that one has a punchline. Yeah. <laughs> this is a premise. That's a good premise though. The, the whole scope, trailer, the whole the, yeah, the whole thing encapsulated in one night. Yeah, like you know how people leave a, a see a movie trailer and like I don't need to see that, I got the whole thing. <laughs> you know, that's what it's like <laughs> fucking me. Yeah, you know, like I don't need to date this guy. I, I got the whole world, the fucked up apartment, the bad jokes, you know, the small dick, whatever it is. But well, it's really it, charming in the beginning, <laughs> yeah, you over, yes. filled with lies. And then the truth comes out. <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny. Maybe there's something like Michael Bay joke where you're like in the trailer, it's like, oh my God, this is high production. Then you see it, you're like, that's it? Right. <laughs> no, right. you only tried to get me in. You didn't, this is a terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel, I mean, I relate to it a lot where I feel like I'm very charming on the first date. <laughs> oh, yeah. By date number two, they're like, that's it? I know. It's just so boring. <laughs> you got nothing more. <laughs> right. Do you ever have girls come to your, that you met doing stand up and then they, do I? They, they lose the charm of the stand-up. Oh, dude, I had that once. <laughs> like that magic trick of seeing you the first time, and then they yes. quickly realize. I try to push off stand-up as long as I can. Yeah. Oh. I try to avoid that, because I'm like, that's like a trick. That's like a Hail Mary if I need it. <laughs> I don't, don't want to open with stand-up. Yeah. Oh, I'm They'll the opposite. S- really? I go all act. Because <laughs> that's a polished version. Where you're from? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I feel like yeah. the, the, if, you do a, if you have a good set in front of a lady, I feel like it. you're like... 60% better off. Oh, yeah. In a, yeah. In a, in a, a one night stand. Well, if they see you at a show, great. But I'm just saying, if you meet in other circumstances, oh, oh yeah. Say, come no. straight to a show. That's fucking mental shit. I see. No, no I was no, with no. a comic in <laughs> at the store. I forget who it was. And she had three Tinder dates in the audience. Oh my god! Like they were three Whoa. separate ones that she had hooked up with. That's a re- that's a dating show, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's like a limitate, but at the uh, store right. you fight it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah, they were all remember out there. Remember a limitate? No, I do. I don't. It was remember like that. trash. Your blind date. Remember blind date? <laughs> yeah. A limitate was like it was like four, you remember it, Peter. Peter's just fucking smiling. <laughs> but it's like four chicks or four dudes, and like they'd all be like fighting for the affection. So one gets eliminated each round. Uh-huh. And you know, there's always with the women, it's more fun because one will be a huge whore, and like by round three, they're like, "I'll show you what it's like," and they like make out with you, and you're like, "All right, this chick." You can tell if the dude's looking for love or if he's just trying to fuck. Yeah, because yeah. he'd always be like, "This one's looking for the real thing," but this one played with my balls in the last round so right she's, that's she's staying that's why i love that show catfish because like they haven't met yet he's like i'm in love with her this is the love of my life oh my god i've never felt this way it's my soulmate then he sees her and she's like kind of chunky and he's like i gotta get out of here uh, it was good to meet you hey here's his uh, bus fare we're in love and like oh my god you're a fat man from syracuse this is fucking bullshit oh yeah what about all those new ones, like the Love Islands and all that? Oh, I can't. There's too many. Fuck too many boy. So Nikki Glazer's hosting one. I still. Oh it's... yeah, she... people love it though. People love it. They say I it's can't like watch a dating show. Reinventing. Anymore. Yeah, I should. I bet they're fun. My yeah, I'm sure they're fun. Who has time? I know. I know. Just... If I'm, I want to watch a good, sh- I want to. No disrespect to those shows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to watch something that's not horseshit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to watch like a good? I'm, I'm still. I still yeah. romanticize like the scripted show. I still love like uh-huh. Mark was praising the bear. I want to. I'm gonna watch that. Oh next yeah, everyone thing. loves the bear. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's so well it's done. It's great. They say it's that. Great. And I worked yeah. in kitchen. They say that anyone that works in food service That's knows. That's it. Yeah. It's, what do What are your favorite shows? Legit. What do you What do you like now and forever? Like what do you? Oh man. Um, forever shows are like the obvious of like The Sopranos, The Wire, um, Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. We said these. It's, um. Yeah, was it? Were there great shows before streaming? I guess HBO, HBO was. Um, HBO's been great for a while. It was the yeah. Shield was fun. Remember the Shield? Yeah, I didn't really watch the Shield. The Shield was cool. It. Oh, that was a kind of a groundbreaking. Love show. Walton Goggins though. Yeah, that dude fucking rules. It was all sitcoms when I was young. It was all oh, like yeah. whatever funny, whatever. You know, 
Do you have a show that you like is your comfort show on the road or something or, or no? No. No. I like garbage. I like trash on the road. Like yeah. anything like ridiculousness or Oh like, <laughs> like wow. Really? Like just I throw, would never have guessed this. Just you. throw on whatever as I'm getting ready and just yeah. like leave it because I don't before you know, bed you don't have a I'm show? not seeking out stuff to stream. I'm not when I'm on the road, I'm just I'm it not takes like, too long. Well, yeah, I'm not logging in and yeah. doing all that. I, I'm gonna so rerun I just throw it on the road. On. I usually throw on like You'd a never think or like that a yeah, shirt would watch ridiculousness. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't feel those two connect, but they don't. And I was anti ridiculousness because I'm friends with Daniel Tosh. Oh, yeah. And it was like, it seemed to me like the bad version of that. Yes, yes. But the girl over in the corner that's laughing is so cute. She's very cute. And it's just, and it's over in 20 minutes. Are you still tight with Tosh? Minutes. Where is Tosh? Yeah, Tosh what is happened? a mystery. We He's get mystery, messages man. about Tosh because I guess we have a crossover base because we're, yeah. uh, we're cruel white men. Oh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> what ha where's Tosh? Uh, Tosh is still doing the show. And he still he goes is? out and does He's spots. Still on? Yeah, oh, I think I, I think it might that. be coming. I think it, I think it's it, a real test. I don't know how, how much hard long Comedy Central sank. Yeah, well, man, uh, nobody really knows what's going on. What the biggest, the big part word? with it is, uh, yeah, yeah sank. it sank is a word. Right, Titanic good. sank. Yeah, yeah it's right, sank. there we go. Uh, sank. -a. Do you think it's needed, or do you think that it's? Do you think it's lacking, or do you think it's not needed? That, like, the Comedy Central was a spot where like young comics could get like their first. TV spot thing, and now it kind of like doesn't exist. There's no like. I think it's both. I think presents. it's not needed and it's lacking. Yeah, I but I was the... grateful for it at the time. But yeah, I mean, we were taken advantage of. We were paid too little for. I think the material we gave up, and I think mm -hmm. uh, they did their best to do nothing to promote. I mean, like, what do we do it in like 2014, 15, or whatever? Like, yeah, man, that was a tough time to be on cable, and it's only gotten worse. Yeah. yeah, and there. Do you think there could be like a young comedians show now, or do you think it's too blown? Well, they've apart? got Charlemagne, who's a huge guy on Comedy Central now. They've got The Daily Show. They've got they've got big names. It's just South like, Park and Tosh. South Park, yeah. I mean, they're all huge, but who's watching Comedy Central? I, I don't. You know. watch a clip <laughs> online later, probably. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure The Daily Show does well on social and shit like that. Right. But I I can't imagine. Are people watching? The only time I watch cable is for sports. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. The, that's what I like about being in a hotel on the road is you just flip through and stop random. What's your garbage? Story? Yeah, just in wh whatever, are you, are you whatever like guy? person dropped in the woods naked or whatever guys. I don't know. All that, <laughs> yeah, that's I, great I, stuff. I'm not. I'm not looking that up at home. No, no, <laughs> it's know? like the radio. You yeah. Know? Just, right. Oh, I love um, Wooly Boogie Boogie. Whatever the fuck. You know? You're like, help me, Rhonda. I love this song. But yeah. you're not gonna go buy Help Me, Rhonda, or put that on at home. No, exactly. The hotel. It is. It is funny that we've combined our like job into like some sort of weird vacation. You got that right. It is weird. I think it helps a uh, marriage. I mean, you're married. Don't you feel like the road? Keeps it gives you a reset a little oh, bit. Oh, hundred percent. It's yeah, like a you, built in. You're excited thing. to see her, right? When yeah, you're and yeah. yeah you, if if I if we were there all the time, just eating dinners with other couples, I don't I don't know if, oh. it, would, if it would last. A lot of people are just trying to fill the time. You know, that's yeah. a great show, Detroiters. Have you seen that? A lot of these non-comedy people, they're just like, oh, all they talk about is this. This show is out, and this. Have you are you watching this? Streaming? I know. Uh, have you tried this restaurant? Have you gone to this bar? Right. <laughs> that's it. That's I their know. whole life. I know. It's horrible. Yeah. Uh, that's a good I've show. Never seen Detroit. Oh my God. They're they're Those so Those guys funny. are both great. And he, Sam, just, oh, yeah. he just got nominated for an Emmy. Oh Sam really? Richardson and Tim Robinson are so funny. So they still got guys. stuff. So why not put a because they this app that they are like you got to do the app. Oh, you like, do no the one app. gives a fuck about your app comedies. Look, yeah, all right, here we go. And you're done. They've Param always yeah, right, Plus exactly. That's four it. lines of instructions of how to get yeah, on the app. You're, you're already like, I'm out. out. This is how you attract young people with no attention span. Have them fill out a bunch of forms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, follow instructions. <laughs> uh, quick, easy steps. Get out. Oh, oh my this god. Isn't easy. That's you not easy. That or the premium. premium. Suck now my I'm premium being fucking nuts. Credit card number right here, dude. Oh, uh, forget it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, you're going to do this? It's going to take a month. <laughs> Peter, don't do <laughs> don't it, dude. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't give them what they want. Yeah. Yeah. They've taken enough from us. Yeah. What, what's your mother's maiden name? Exactly. Yeah. It just makes me God. want to read. Were you yeah, ever like, sexually assaulted? What are you talking about? <laughs> Broad City. Brutal. They've always hit shows, and then you're like, what? They're behind a wall. It's like Fort Knox. But what do you, you think that, that like young comics are getting shorted because there's not like a... Uh, 
Well, we got the YouTube thing that we can do. It's or you can just, you just YouTube, post, a, just post, post your YouTube, shit. social media. You can make your own destiny. Own. It's a lot of extra work, you know. I mean, especially you want to stand out now. The production value on YouTube's got to be decent because yeah. you're competing. Like I've always said that. Like I remember with Comedy Central, I did an hour special with them, and they were like, uh, "We'll put it out for free on our on our website." And I was like, "Oh my god, this is going to be huge for me." I just knew this would be huge. And then they put a commercial every two and a half oh. minutes. And I was like, okay, I'm competing against the best comics in the world here. Yeah. And there's no commercials on these other apps, uh, HBO, right. Netflix. Yeah. No one's going to, I can't watch my own shit. Right. You know? Yeah. But so uh, that that was tough. I, right. I, I think they've made it really hard on themselves on these on this ad-based subscription model. Whereas... The, the just the subscription model like HBO or Netflix or Amazon, it's it's just obviously easier. And now maybe Netflix is going to have ads. Yeah, they're we'll going to have ads but... now. What? Yeah, it's, I think you're probably like Hulu, like you pay higher to not oh, have ads. No. When will that start? But they're going to do it. They're they're exploring it now. Oh, so. this guy's got a special coming out soon. <laughs> oh yeah. Finally, I finally get in just as the fucking ship is sinking. <laughs> Thanks Netflix. Did you record it yet? It's done. Yeah, it's done. It's fucking. That's good. My career. It's done. <laughs> uh, no, the the special is. Uh, yeah, the special is pretty much ready to go. Nice it's name. To uh, it's called Same Time Tomorrow. Mm. It's on Netflix nice. September first. Nice. Uh, yeah, you know that's I think great. I, Very exciting. I, I'm pretty happy with it. Hopefully, it's not horseshit. I don't know. <laughs> it's tough. I was just talking to Cristela Alonso. She has a special on Netflix. It just came out. How does she feel? Uh, relieved. That's what we really? said. Like you're never happy. You're just relieved. Yeah, it's like oh, it's I out. People relieved. aren't killing uh, it. They, people seem to like it. Ah, she's okay. cool. Yeah, she is cool. She did like a great job. On here, we should. I love yeah, her on. she's great. She's. Really I don't. Good. I just don't know. Yeah, I. I never feel that good. Honestly, no, I, it's nerve wracking. And, and it's just like part of it's uh, probably deeper than comedy. But you're like, when do you feel good? <laughs> yeah, you know what I, mean? I don't like, know. That's a you funny tape, question. You're working on it. You feel bad because the material's not in it, not there. <laughs> then you're honing it. You're starting to feel okay because you're killing. Yeah. Then you tape it. You're sick of the material, so you're fucking miserable. Yeah. Then you're back to square one, and you're like, I hate myself. I'll tell you again. when you feel good when you get that you get that billionaire bit working. That's a good feeling when mm -hmm. you get the new one working. That's great. And then killing is fun. But yeah, you're right. It, I never feel that good though, because when you're killing, you're like, "Well, these should be killing." I worked on them really hard. Uh, so uh, you so gotta, you gotta, you gotta get therapy on this. Yeah, you therapy. have to. But you have I'm to going be, tomorrow. You, you need some week. gratitude. We'll bring this up. Gratitude is a power force. Go in. Yeah, gratitude is key. That's the thing that kills uh, envy and resentment and all that. It's gratitude. Well, I'm not envious or resentful. I just, I just don't like myself. I guess I don't. Well, know. join the club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're drinking at noon. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, but I think you I gotta let it in. Sammy. I will let it in. You're right. I, I hope it's short lived, it. though. Even if you obtain it, sure. Well, because I I think you, the need for content is her quality in a way where I'm just oh, kind of sure. like, wow, I really have got to keep churning it out, and I feel fucking burnt out. And then you're working. It's like it's hilarious. We're like working on this. This is how you know stand up's not an art form. Uh, I'm working it out in West Palm Beach. Yeah, <laughs> this ain't a fucking art, okay? These right. people are shit faced. I know, I know. Yeah, I but you know, I don't know. It's the expectation of it that's, that kills it because it's look the whole job, the whole career is, as I see it, is just to create create stuff. You're always you have to yes, make stuff for sure. It's what you're doing this. It's why you're doing your act. It's uh, you're a funny little character, and you've got to. <laughs> And it's your job to make That's funny a good shit. Special title, right there. <laughs> yeah. Funny little fella. Yeah. And didn't, that, I had that with the pandemic, where you realize, like, oh my god, it's it's all gone now. I didn't realize. I mean, I always knew I loved it, but you're like, I need this. Yeah. I need comedy. I need stand up. I and need we, it. you're up on a roof. You need it. Like, yeah, yeah, if it roof. went away, you'd, yeah. you'd kill yourself. So what? No, I, I mean, look, I fucking, I, I was miserable, but I, I was so grateful. I mean, we talk about gratitude. Yeah, I, mean, I was like on those roofs, and I was like, this is special. Just, yeah, just surviving. Right? Sounds like, like you were happy. I was ah. happy. I am happy. I was fucking around. But I mean, like, <laughs> but you do, but you do get on those roofs, and you're like, wow, we lost so much, and now, yeah, we really can create our own destiny in a way. I mean, you mm -hmm. really, if you make your own shit, I mean, yeah, these streamers only have so much power over us anymore. Now yes. we really can't say, oh, you don't want it? That's cool. Yeah, YouTube exists. Yeah, and we've built up enough people who listen to this, thank God, and who, uh, uh and who 
I guess like our comedy who will, who will watch but uh, yeah. so Netflix is great and I'm and I'm grateful for the opportunity but like thank God for YouTube thank God for other options because TikTok you know, <laughs> tic- dude I mean TikTok's I amazing You're talking about his lifespan yeah. or- <laughs> oh, oh okay this conversation yeah. I got no- I got another thirty seconds yeah uh, so you know. Thank God for all that shit. Yeah, you know, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Instagram, all that. I make Although, a lot of money on Facebook. Just putting out videos on Facebook. I will watch say them. Instagram. Oh, yeah? Instagram though is and Facebook. It's just poison. The shit that they pull down. You're like, oh, well, that's a whole another. Women game. are literally showing their butt crack, and you're and you're <laughs> saying know. that my shit is harmful to the community. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm like. I got shadow banned on Instagram because I posted a fuck. I do Q and A sometimes. What shadow ban? Where it's like they they bury you so you don't get seen by as many people. What? It's like being punished. Oh, really? Yeah. I have to go sit. And the did corner. they tell you that's what they did, or yeah. they, your numbers you just it. go down? You feel you it. You can put but, your name but, in the search and it won't come up. But they posted what? that my, my content is harmful. Because uh, I do like Q and A sometimes, where I just say "therapist Sam," which is hashtag the rapist Sam. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But it's uh, I do like tell me your problems, and I'll tell you why it's going to be okay. It's like my little like uplifting uh-huh. thing. But someone said it was a dumb, it's not even a good joke. Mm-hmm. But someone wrote like some guy hit me with a with a uh, golf cart, and I said run him over with a real car, and they wrote this is inciting violence. And uh, I was like, you know it's not. Oh god, I'm getting punished by a fucking robot and an algorithm. An algorithm. Yeah. The future is bleak. Yeah, yeah god. Right. Thank Jesus. God YouTube is not this crazy yet. I know. Yeah, but it's going there. that way. Way. It's going that way. Yeah. Oh shit. What happens when those things all We're turn fucked. like into that? Because clean comedy, you can think you're a clean comic, and then all of a sudden, right? No. Well, clean is changed. No. Even if you say something and it's misinterpreted, exactly. I had a I had this opportunity for this TV thing, and uh, someone took a joke of mine, total misunderstanding of it, and the opportunity went away. And it was just because someone un- who I never met or knew or they or, or got to explain yeah anything. Uh, just Can you that go into was detail? It. What what network? Seinfeld was like, that was my bit. <laughs> <laughs> Whistling's mine. You're finished. It was his bit. Uh, it was um it was a TV thing. I don't want to say exactly the networks or any of that stuff. Um, and, uh, and they took a bit you said, or like a joke, or off- it was a joke in one of my specials. Wow! It was an old joke in one of my old specials. Um, well, if you're going down, we're all fucked. And you're exactly. you're, you're and, a clean comic, and yeah. you you have bite. I mean, you're not at all like a vanilla clean comic, but you have bite. Like any like Thirty Rock has bite. The but joke you're a clean was, comic. The joke was um, it was the beginning of one of my specials, and I and and I was I'll. I'll I'll t- I'll tell you what the joke was, but then also, um, it was Asian joke. And then at, when Trump came out and said his shit, I was like, I don't want to leave this open for misinterpretation. So m- let's edit this out for now. And somebody um, saw it, but wasn't like a hate. I was afraid of like hateful people being like, you know, if the joke is, uh, I don't like Chinese people, uh, <laughs> not some of them, all of them, and it's because it's based on fear. And uh, fear comes from ignorance, and I'm ignorant of that culture, and mm-hmm. that's why they scare me. And then I go into this stupid joke about uh, Chinatown of like eating uh, like frogs or something. Yeah. Um, so and when I wrote it, I was like, I, I want this to be a joke about being ignorant of people's cultures, you know? Yeah. And and get to the frog joke, <laughs> and saying I don't like Chinese people was the way to be like, what? What are you saying? And the crowd laughs because they know it's me. You know, I don't hate anybody. Clearly, it's a joke. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm like, I don't like Chinese people. Not some of them, all of them. And and that is based on fear. And fear comes from ignorance. And I am ignorant of that culture. You're explaining all of it. Wow. It's all right there in the thing. And and also, and And that joke, and that. You wrote people in by, like, you build an audience, you show that you're not ignorant. Yeah. And then you explain your ignorance. Right. And there's still a problem. And there's still a problem. And you're trying to say, you're trying to say this is where people's problems with other cultures comes from. It comes from fear, which comes from ignorance. And this is an example of it in a lighthearted way. And um, and that joke probably cost me 600 a year. Damn. Wow. 
That's horrible. Because one year? person interpreted one person, it the incorrect way. And we have to cater to that one weirdo. No idea who they are. Uh, no idea what they are. One person in an Apple store uh, looking office <laughs> yeah. with mm-hmm. slaves was like, I find this joke to be lacking in taste. Yeah. And, and then a kid jumped out the window. <laughs> and then he shot a so Chinese then, person for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> so then they go through. So as this was, as they were parsing it out, and I had shot all the episodes, by the way. I oh, it, it was already done. It was done, and uh, and then, and so then, so they come to me and they say, "What's with this this joke?" And I said, uh, "It's about the being ignorant of people's cultures." And then I said, um, "Wow!" And just so you know, a year before I met any of you people, um, <laughs> I was afraid when Trump was being such a <laughs> cunt about um, China and the virus, uh, I took that I talked to my editors and despite them seeing no problem with the joke, I said, let's edit it out just in case it's misinterpreted by some horrible people out there. Right. So when they come to me and they're like, and I'm like, doesn't exist anymore. Like, I don't know even how you found it. Um, and, uh, and we pulled it. So then in the interim as they're deciding what to do. Wait, so you pulled this clip and they still somehow found it and then tried to get you in trouble. Yeah. That's what? insanity. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't scrub everything from the internet, so they probably found it in some, you know, some people repost your specials. They, they looked, uh, they searched to ruin you. They did. So then, to bolster their case, they decided to go through all of my shit oh, for 25 years. Oh, 25 my God. Year career. Which I hope, everything out of context. I hope whoever it's this horrible. person was gets fucking colon cancer. Including... Untreatable. All I my, hope it stays in his <laughs> asshole for a long time. Including all of my rogans. Uh-oh. Three hours of pop. Um, I don't know how many times, 10 times, I don't know. Um, all of my stand-up specials, all of my TV appearances, all of my radio appearances. Couldn't find one thing. Wow, that's couldn't impressive find, and Couldn't rare. find one thing. So you have, like if you couldn't find one thing and the joke was horrible, yeah. child molesting joke, you'd be like, well, it still outweighs it. But you have a joke that you're, that you're on the fence. And we've pointed out, this is about people being ignorant of pe- people's cultures. And then they go through all of that and they can't find one thing that this guy is doing. Shouldn't that be enough? That should bolster the case, that should do the thing. And they Unreal, it dragged dude. on, dragged on for like six months. Wow! And it, honestly, it's you know, it was my proudest work. It was you know, it was it it's was a money a, it was a money gig. Um, so Still. it's not like but that. money gigs but, lead to other shit. And but they, and they yeah, they fucked you in a sense to, to yeah, they did. pull it over that yeah, completely. And so, you're such a you're such a decent guy. I mean, like I've known you for so many years, and you've never been anything but just solid. And if this can happen to you. Imagine like a guy with a ton of podcasts where he says uh, horrific shit. <laughs> you know, what I'm trying to say is Mark, Mark and I will never work in this town ever again. <laughs> no, no, Mark exactly. and I are finished. <laughs> oh um, yeah, no, but but Tom, that's one of the quiet kind of things where this is the first time I'm telling the story because it yeah. just is pretty much put to bed. Um, yeah. Uh, but that's kind of like the quiet. Like we we're aware of like the big time cancellations of like you know people being torn out for something that they tweet or something after they've had success or whatever. This is under the but rug. But how much of this is happening oh, at yeah. all these young, smaller levels? Protect Definitely. their neck, fear-based horseshit. Where That's they, what it is. Where they, they know that this is bullshit, but they they're have powers. To. They it's have not a dumb organization. It's right. It's They go, it's not worth the mess. If this could be any bit of a mess, it's not worth it for but, this show. And there were several parties involved, and then they went to like the, the big production company that like Jesus. over the whole thing. And that president was like, what are you showing this to me for? Do you realize how many how many people are coming for people yeah. all, every day? So much worse. I, this isn't a thing. Why are you giving me this? Oh, good. This isn't a thing. But ultimately, that wasn't enough. Wow. What yeah. did your agent say in a scenario like this? Holy fuck. <laughs> what is going on? What is happening to the world? Yeah. If, it's, if you, if that's what I keep hearing, if, if they're coming after you, Right. What, 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 what? Did you consider litigious? I don't think I thought about bag, it in my but... fantasy, but I don't know what, what that on what basis. Well, you just you know put a lot of work into this. It was in the can, right? I got paid for that. Oh, you, okay, okay. Well, that that's I got different. paid for that, but uh, 
yeah, that's ju- you know, you just you can't sue because your show didn't get picked up. You're yeah, dealing yeah. with so. people who are just cowards. You're dealing with people who uh, it's corporations they who play are safe. right. Well, they're they're protecting themselves to the point where like, look, we don't like a- racism. We don't like assholes. You're so not that. I mean, you're you're so clearly not that. Like. Yeah. The fact that you can't separate that shows that you're just out of your fucking mind. So the problem is not racism, but the fact that you can't identify what racism is. Right. Well, there were a couple people on the staff who came out and defended it who were Chinese Americans who were like, it's this kind of false attacks on people that dilutes the real problems and the real Asian I hate out it. there. So 100%. true. It really dilutes all of it. So now you're going to send, you're going to have this story as part of the narrative. Yes. Doug Stanhope was a bit where he says, I hate Jews and I'm a Jew. And I've never for a second thought that Doug's an anti Semite. Of course not. I mean, it's <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My point is, yeah. There's comedy and then there's real beliefs i mean like there's yeah. real bigotry in the world 100%. and instead of combating that you're like we'll we'll do what we think is helping it's not you're yeah. hurting they're not they're, hurting. They're, they're not even they're not even thinking about a cause they're not they're not thinking about defending i thought more by by uh editing my joke and like putting it in a special place to 100%. keep it off they're not thinking about that at all no they're thinking is this person and I imagine it has to be, is this young person down the hall who works for us going to cause so much yes, shit? Yes, exactly. And if this thing goes on the air, are they going to start up shit and be a headache? And we're going to have to, are we going to get dragged in because of what this person, this ignorant person who doesn't have the um, maturity or the intelligence to parse what this really is? Yeah. But are they, is it worth the firestorm that they're going to kick up? Yeah, and the sad part is this ridiculousness won't go away until companies stop catering to that one person. Who's That's immature. right. And but they still do because it's scary. Yeah, and they don't want to lose one. Fear. They do. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of Netflix is like it's the yeah. one place where they're like, you guys have to act like grownups. This is this is ideas. This is whatever. And if you don't like it, you do it. The, like all the, the normal way of operating. Right. I thought about that a lot. And I yeah. new special. I have like some pedophilia jokes. I'm like, if I throw this on fucking Instagram, they're going to pull it down uh-huh. on Netflix. But Netflix will keep live. it. Right. That's art. That's baby. a huge thing. That's yeah. huge. It's a huge thing. That Chappelle thing, whether you like him or hate him, was gr- big for stand up comedy. It was. Keeping that special on there. Yeah. And by the way, I saw the numbers for all the specials. You know, it's like Manis Galco, Bill Burr, Seinfeld, Closer. It was like really? quadruple the rest of them. Wow. Because obviously the controversy sparked viewership, but still it's like just because you don't like it or disagree with it doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. Well, it's like the That's Howard right. Stern thing. Remember back in the day when it was like, uh, oh, how, long, yeah. how long does the Howard Stern lover listen? Two hours. How long does the Howard Stern hater listen? Three hours. <laughs> or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Why? They want to know what he's going to say next. Yeah. Same shit for everybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And yeah, his martini's dope, by the way. Very good. I'm, fu- I'm feeling it, bro. We've been drinking all day. Yeah. And That's I'm the not. idea, right? Good job. With martini? You know how they say about martinis? What? Right, yeah. Um, what is it? It's like uh, it's like tits on it's like tits on a it's like uh, it's like tits on a cow or tits on a whatever. One is not enough. Two is perfect. Three is too many. Something ah, like that. Ooh. That's not bad. I think Seinfeld wrote that. No. <laughs> you know, I opened up to you. <laughs> well, we 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 bonded over a because we I had a faux pas with Seinfeld as uh, I've I've told a million times, but. You got to tell your Steve Martin one. What's your Steve Martin story? Um, which one? The uh, the gag you tried to pull. Oh, the uh, the. By the way, his new show is killer. Man, I just saw the first two. And I Only love murders. It. I love. Oh it. yeah, yeah. Martin Short. Good. They're all so good. Martin Selena Short. Gomez is amazing. Yeah, Short is uh, is a hero. Yeah, he's just still on. He's still like so you see good. Him on the screen, but, uh, just that subtlety. That yeah, subtle. What happened with Steve Martin? I was uh, opening for Jerry at the Beacon, and uh, I hadn't been opening for him for a long time. And we were going to go, and I was going to open for him at the Beacon, and then go to this next city um, right after that. And uh, I got there early, and I'm psyched to 
see Jerry and stuff. And, you know, it's my friend from the road. And uh, I'm in the green room and Jerry's not there yet. And uh, I hear the elevator, you know, in the beacon, that thing, right? You sold out the beacon recently, right? And uh, you hear that elevator coming up like that horrible <laughs> green room, Legendary. dressing room section. So I'm uh, sitting up in Jerry's room and I... I do a gag of laying down like I'm asleep, like he's late. So I'm laying down on the uh, couch and uh, and then the door opens and I hear them. I hear him talking. I think he's with his manager and uh, they come in and Jerry's like, oh, and I open my eyes and it's Jerry Seinfeld, Steve Martin and Tom Hanks. Oh, <laughs> man. And I'm doing a. A sea level bit. <laughs> <laughs> and what what did they say? Hey, how are you? I'm like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of it was, it was pretty awkward. But then we just kind of like hung out in the green room, and I got bumped because Steve was going to go out and do the first stand up he had done. Wow! In 30 years or something without Holy without shit. the banjo, he was going to go and he took my spot to go open for Jerry. Did you put up a fight? And. uh and you know what? I think maybe Ben Stiller was there. Jesus. I didn't put up a fight, but I sat next to Steve while uh, he was n pretty nervous and has list out and was like going over the jokes. And he starts reading me some of the jokes. Like, you think this you think this is funny? And he's like reading me the jokes and he's, you know, he's not really selling them. He's, he's like, kinda... it's like whistling when you go away from your family on the road. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you know. Well, you have to say yes. Everything's funny. Of course, it's of coming course. out of Steve Martin. Yeah, it's yeah. coming out of. He's a legend. Yeah, my God, and uh, just being around that that upper echelon of of that's like superstar. You're not just star. That's you know Tom Hanks. Was he cool, Steve Martin? Steve Martin? They were all very, they were all gentlemen. They were all really funny, and they were they were nice, but chill. You know, everybody was just kind of. How about Hanks? He's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's the best. He's like, yeah, he's gonna make you feel great and. He's got like real empathy. Like he's gonna, you know. Steve was kind of in his own thing and like doing. And and Hanks is like, "You doing okay over there? You doing all right? You having a good Hanks time? Just you doing wow. all right? You're having a great time? Yeah, this is great." And tells us a great story. He's such and, a fucking icon. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, oh God. Hanks, it's weird. Like the, what Seinfeld is to comedy, Hanks almost is to film. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Where he's just like so American, so yeah, classic. Like yeah. Norm and I were talking because Mark and I want to make a movie. And we were talking about like classic eighties like ba like bachelor party, dude. That those yeah. don't exist anymore. That kind of we want to parody one of those. Like yeah, like, almost like that. But that'd be a great more idea. So, like a self aware raunchy. Now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what buttons not to push? It's like they were cranking out. Fortune and I talk about it all the time. Like what happened to like ten comedies a year? Exactly. You know, and you and, and they don't still seventy make money. percent of them sucked. You know, but they were still like were some fun. laughs. And you had John Candy show up. Yes. And it was just like you cranked out comedy, but I, I think everyone's a little frightened about making comedy. Of course, yeah. Fuck that shit, dude. I know. I, I do. Think it would crush. People are yes. frightened. Well, guess crush. what? That means that that there's a hunger because your fear, fear, what you're talking about with the yeah. corporation you were working for, fear in film. There is a hunger with an audience, and that's why the these podcasts have exploded. That's and right. That's why we need a new comedy. I mean, I think of Todd Phillips movies. Like yeah. Hangover, old school. There's a reason they blew the fuck up. I know. There's an appetite for that. A hundred percent. And obviously, like appetite. Todd is a fucking beast. I'm not saying it's not just like anyone can make them, but there is an appetite for that. Yeah, Judd yeah. is another one. Yeah. Like, and where's the guy like making Hangover for half the money? Yes. You know, just young people and cranking them out. Exactly. So we don't have no. to go to fucking China. We can go to fucking uh, yeah. Jersey. We'll go to Lithuania. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We don't even need a plane. We'll just shoot it at Newark Airport. Yeah. It's the hangover, <laughs> but in Slovenia. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what stays in Czechoslovakia? Do you, do you have a peeve? <laughs> uh, a, a pet peeve or anything? Yeah. You want to get out? Yes. I think we got to wrap this thing up here. Yeah. Oh, seven. Do you guys have spots tonight? We do. I got a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Seller. Let's go. I've got a nice sweet buzz on for these sets. Ooh. Sorry, Liz. Now, Sorry, Liz. Sorry, Comedy Cellar. I'm Are you going to let it ride or are you going to cap it? I'm going to let it ride, bro. Yeah, me too. What do you mean let it ride? Keep going. Oh, keep going. You know, keep a through line. Drink when you get there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, right. have, I'll have like a, a light drink to, to even ease out. Yeah, to kind of yeah. ease it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't like drinking and performing. 
I don't like it either, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> this is my first choice. Start with- I, I linked up with this fucking alcoholic, <laughs> and uh, I got myself in a pickle. <laughs> Oh yeah! Start repeating jokes. Uh, the, worst. Uh, the worst of all. So the you worst. guys ever whistle while you? Uh, <laughs> many, uh, that, was the, uh, that was the ninth whistle callback we've done. God I don't damn care. <laughs> we'll, call, we'll call this episode "Whistle While You Work." Yeah. <laughs> I stole the joke. What, uh, what, uh, what, what peeve do you have, Tom? Um, I don't like, and I'm sorry to make it travel oriented, but um, bring it on. Where I, I live, no, we live for these. Um, I just got a million miles on American Airlines. Wow. And uh American. I got like like one email and like 10,000 miles. I saw a guy on TikTok and he hit a million miles. They like met him with champagne coming off the plane. They huh. drove him to the next gate. I was like I, I got nothing. What? I, was, I th- really thought like balloons were going to or maybe the captain would chime in, "Hey, Tom's with us." Yeah. Nothing. I wonder so if he's a TikTok guy or something. So they oh, knew maybe it would get like more. a travel guy. Maybe he was building it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're probably right. But I don't like when I'm sit- sitting in the aisle, and people come up and they want to sit in. They, they have the window seat or anywhere. I don't like that people don't use "excuse me" anymore. They mm. just stand over you yes. with their mouth agape and just wait for you. To notice, and I, it's really obvious on the airplane because there's a string of people behind, and sometimes I'll just quietly wait to see how they're going to handle it. Yeah, uh, how are you going to? How are you going to get around? Just say excuse me, right? It's just crazy. say excuse me. I'm in. I'm in there. Sure, welcome. Sometimes I'll give a little like jet. Like, uh. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you're like, right? Exactly. Excuse, I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. What is this? 2001 Space Odyssey? Yeah. In the beginning? <laughs> be a fucking human. You primate. Come on. Yeah. Be a human being. Oh man, I'm on flight with uh, Gary Veter last uh, week, and like w- we just fuck with each other the entire flight. So whoever's <laughs> next to us, I genuinely feel bad for because yeah. our, our characters are basically like guy who gets whacked on The Sopranos. So we go shut the fuck up, you big mouth fuck, and then fake shoot the other person. And people are like, who are these idiots? Uh, but I'm coming back from the bathroom, and mm. I I get through the seat. Veter's in the middle. I just start humping him, and the lady's <laughs> laughing. So I'm like, all right, we're doing something right. <laughs> she's in the window. <laughs> no, she's in the aisle. Oh, you're she in the window. Up. I'm in the window. Okay. So I'm humping Veter. He's like, fuck you, you fucking prick. <laughs> but Veter and I now do these characters that we just call it, like, let's just pretend to be the worst people on the planet. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes Veter will be too loud with it. But you guys are terrorists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this woman cuts in front of him. She's in the row behind, and he goes, this bitch is. Cutting, <laughs> dude. She can, she can hear you. And he goes, still from Long Island. <laughs> he goes, this bitch is cutting me. Like, she heard you. And he goes, that whore can't hear shit. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! He's taking this character too far. Uh, uh, <laughs> Guy uh, is the worst person. Yeah. Uh. He needs some Rodney outfits. <laughs> yeah, right. We, dude, I'll tell you when you're on the road with your friend, and Ooh, it's making it horrible. Seat belt extender, will you? <laughs> get a load of her. <laughs> it, it makes the trip fly by yeah. when you're with a guy who's just uh, making dumb yeah, shit yeah. jokes. Yeah, uh, it's Gary hilarious. Gary Peter, my my brother. <laughs> it makes my my pet peeve seem very small. It's <laughs> 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 oh, funny. Well, it's really good hanging with you this guys. This is a Thank great you. app. You're the yeah, best. You guys Tom, are the we best. We love you. I mean, Tom's got so many albums online. Yes. Netflix specials. Yes. One, it, one of our, we've shouted him out so much, so it's nice to have him here. One of our favorite comics. Got a Netflix radio show on Sirius with Fortune Feimster. Uh, I mean, on the road. Anything coming up the next few months you want to plug, Tom? Um, I've got a big show coming up in Seattle. I'm doing two at the uh, at the theater up there. I've the got Netflix. the Wilbur Theater in Boston. Nice. Beautiful. I'm doing a bunch of clubs through the summer. Uh, getting ready for my Netflix special. And uh, yeah, just TomPapa.com. I'm everywhere. One Hell of the yeah. best comics. So Go to TomPapa.com. You guys are the best. Nah. We love you. We really do. And uh, we'll be all over the, the country, too. What do I have? When are we? When does this come out? 
Okay, I got uh, San Jose, Los Angeles, nice one. Pittsburgh, Dania Beach, Louisville, Irvine, oh. Omaha, Phoenix, Lexington, New Brunswick, Oklahoma City, Springfield, Missouri, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Happy Thanksgiving to me. <laughs> Fuck you, my agent. <laughs> Kansas, Tacoma, Spokane, all over the place. Samuel.com nice. slash shows. I love it. Hey, Mark is coming to Choo-choo. Providence Comedy Connection. Improv in a West Palm. Palm, Big room. Uh, the Aura in Portland, Maine. Richmond Funny Bone. The Amphitheater in Brandon, Mississippi with Bert. San Jose nice. Improv. Uh, Red Rocks Amphitheater. Uh, the Dartmouth. Danforth, sorry. Canada. Royal Oak, Royal Oak Michigan. And uh, you know it. Roxanne Theater. That's in Pittsburgh. Pantages in Minneapolis. The Revolution Hall in Portland. Neptune Theater in Seattle. Vogue in Vancouver. Joy in New Orleans, all kinds of stuff. Fillmore, the Wilbur, Zanies in Nashville. Say hello. Come on by. Have wow. a drink. We Wait might be drunk. We're in all the same places. Uh oh. We might be drunk. Pod.com for all the sweet merch. You got the cool glasses, the shirts, everything. The nice. Patreon's kicking it. This I is mean, a real Tom, show. Tom's got books out on Amazon as well. Check out his books. I mean, truly a great comic. So, yes. So support. One of the best. You guys the are the road. best. We love him. We, we're pumped to have you. And uh, we love you guys at home. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Sunday's the day for my nap.